All righty. Well, this is. <laughs> Let me try. You already again. fucked it up. I know. Terrible. Terrible. Know. Lord, okay. You right, fuck up the... a wet dream. Clap yourself. All right. <laughs> I never have wet dreams. This episode of the We Like Shooting Show is brought to you by the Mag Shack, Nutrient Survival, Swamp Box Optics, Night Fishing, Blue Alpha, and Black Rhino Concealment. Wow. Welcome to the We Like Shooting Show, episode 523. Our cast tonight, Jerry Paz, Derek checking in from Valley City, Ohio. We got Savage 1R from the wilds of Washington. Aaron Krieger, the Machine Gun Moses, checking in from Tornado Destroyed, Michigan. Nick Lynch from Montana. My name is Sean Heron. Welcome to the show. And welcome to the best, the biggest, and the most masturbatory gun podcast in the universe. This is We Like Shooting, and I would like to welcome all of you to kiss our ass we don't care so so my son asked me the other day i well i asked him to clear some weeds around the uh the garden posts yeah the, where we have the orchard or the apple trees uh-huh and uh he was like okay well you dad i really need a uh um, a weed whacker but with the metal blades on it that would help i'm like oh, you Jesus. mean and i'm like you mean a weed uh, i mean you mean a, a lawnmower <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. they've got the weed whackers uh, instead right. of the string they've got the like metal right blade. right uh, but I mean, like those are terrifying, but, but yeah. a, a lawnmower would work. I mean, yes. Also, that would work. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a bigger weed whacker. You're like a lawnmower. And he was like, uh, exactly. he was. He did. What about those really big weed whackers that are like a lawnmower, but it's actually a weed whacker? You mean the hedgehogs? Uh, sure. I don't know what they're called. Brush hogs. Brush, brush hogs. hogs. There you go. Brush hogs. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. <laughs> no, the brush Jeremy. hogs the big one that you put on a tractor. <laughs> yeah, brush hogs. One, like, I have a brush hog on my tractor. It's like five yeah. feet wide. I don't know if they're specific in size. I mean, you I, could get one I of those mini a, br brush well, hogs. Brush hog was a brand. I got a brush hog in my pants. Oh, brush that no, hog. Then, <laughs> the ones yeah. I'm thinking of look like a, it's like a triangular shaped uh, lawnmower. But with an exposed blade, right? Uh, it's not an exposed blade. It's got. It's usually got like a line or something like a weed whacker. But oh, you would God. use it to clear, like, if you left your entire lawn and let it grow to like two feet high, you would use this instead of a lawn. Like a, you're talking like a hedge, like a hedge row uh, trimmer, like uh, uh, like a fence sure. fence line trimmer. It's like a big weed whacker, but it's on wheels. Know. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. What yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My um, old neighbor had one of those. He used to let me borrow to do my fence line. That thing was fucking awesome. They're dope. I was gonna continue my joke and say it's more like a brush piglet, but I guess that moment is over now. So we'll just go ahead and move on. It was over before it happened. Like mm. a mini pig. Yeah. Whatever. No Fuck. Such thing. <laughs> Fuck you. They're There's starved. no such thing as a mini pig. They're they're starved. They're starved like uh, the potbelly pigs, right? No, a yeah. potbelly pig is a they're breed of mini pig. Uh, like Don't they also a, get to be like 200 pounds? Yeah, if people feed them too much and make them fat as fuck. Aaron's biker name is Mini Pig. Most most no. mo most potbelly pigs you see are overfed, which Mini is why hog. like their fat goes over their eyes and their belly scrapes the ground. It's because right. most people overfeed their fucking pigs and overfeed their fucking dogs and cats. Like everybody's got a fat dog, and like if you can't like reach down and feel your dog's rib cage on their side, you're overfeeding your fucking dog. So like, this oh, is America. Just, He's yeah, we just, do it fat. You're, you're yeah, killing. All, you're killing your fucking John, dog. Listen to me when I say that I want my bacon fatty as fuck, because that shit is like, mm, that's what I want. That's what I want. But I also want magazines, <laughs> like the kind, like the kind you read. No, I want the kind that I put in my gun. Where would you get those from? TheMagShack.com, and we talked in the other show about Ruger magazines. So I went over to TheMagShack.com. And I just double checked what kind of Ruger magazines they had. And Aaron, would you be surprised to know that they have a lot of Ruger magazines? I wouldn't be surprised to know that because in the name, it's like the Mag Shack. So I just assumed it's this building with magazines inside of it. Yeah, they got the Ruger 10 22 25 round mags. They got the GSG Ruger 22 110 round drum mags. They got do the, the, do they have the Tech 22. Mags. That takes Ruger that. Mags. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So of all these would fit. They got the 50 round, they got the 25 round coupled, which is a 50 round as well, but they've got the pro mag. Uh, never mind, don't buy pro mag. You know, never if, buy, uh, never if buy Trump 
gets reelected, mm-hmm. the Mag Shack should have a magazine sale. <laughs> oh God! Uh, make a great, make America great again zine sale. Mm-hmm. Well, get your magazines at the Mag Shack, like right here. I have a Springfield Echelon magazine, and you should buy replacements or extras, which is what I did at the magshack.com. No coupon code necessary. Uh, you can go to we slash sponsors and click on their link, or you can just go to their website and order magazines because we know you need them. We know you love them. We know that you want them. Okay. The magazine would be a great name for a zine. It would, but what would it be about? Like just, it would it. have to be like a right wing political zine. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or, or magazine about magazines. Because altogether, it's the magazine, but it's also the magazine. If you split yeah. it into three, no, we get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got it from from the we beginning. Bu- actually. We bundled our insurance. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> this is a segment called Gear Chat, where we talk about popular guns, uh, stuff that we want, and uh, but stuff you see, it's like a zine. May not have Nick's still going with this. Okay. Uh, Crypto Redneck said, <laughs> I just missed the way he said China with a T. In the so yeah. listen, gear chat tonight. I have something that I'm very, very excited about. I've been waiting a bit for it, and it is this. It's a scope for those that's that are a, listening. It's a large-ish scope. Why yeah. is this so big, Sean? Is there something component in there that makes it larger? Well, genetics. Uh, it's to compensate for his tiny penis. Oh yeah. So well, I'll just show us for his penis, brush. Were you talking to the governor of Arizona, Nick? Recently? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't so, I don't know what that means. I'm holding this optic, and this is the Rix Optics Leap L6. Look it up, sweaty, because it's a thermal optic. I want one. Nope. No, I do though. No, you can't have it. I didn't say I can have it. I said I wanted it. Oh, you can't have one. I don't. I understand that, but I want one. They don't sell them to communists. I'm not a communist, so we're all in good shape. Americans. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the the this is the Rick's Optics Leap L6. Um, I, I want one. Messing with it a lot. Today. Damn it, Aaron. <laughs> this is a thermal rifle scope. Uh, it's not a clip on. It's one that literally goes on a rifle. So y'all know that I recently went coyote hunting and there was a bunch of different thermal optics there. I actually took the Sightmark Wraith IR, which is like a $2,100 uh, thermal. And it did okay, but the other dudes had like bigger, better, way more expensive ones. And uh, so I I got this one. I have messed with it quite a bit. I kind of knew what I was looking for. And I got to say, so far... Everything as advertised is freaking awesome. So I put it up in a table to kind of compare it to some of the other things, uh, some of the other stuff on the market. So the the sensor resolution is 640 by 360, I believe. Uh, The display resolution on the LED inside is going to be 1080p or 1920 by 1080. Oh, so here they they up res. No, the, the, so the, the sensor, the screen that you look at is 1080p. Yeah. So they, they up res the image from six, whatever, 640. No, the sensor is 640 by 360, I think. But the screen, what, what displays to your eye is 1080p. Yes. So they up res the 640 to 1080p. No, <laughs> <laughs> they are not related. Okay. Okay, so the sensor is basically the thing that detects thermal heat out to. On this one, I believe it's like 2,600 yards. Right. But the display resolution, what you see, the picture that you see is going to be 1080p. Now, the sensor is different from the display. The sensor is what retrieves and sees the heat, and the display is what displays everything, including the UI to your eye. The interesting thing about this is that it has an optical zoom. And I think that's a little bit of a misnomer because it's not optical zoom like you would see on a normal scope, right? Like on a normal scope, it changes the uh, positioning of the glass to actually zoom in. But what this has and what they call a continuous optical zoom is it is internal to the device and it zooms in on the image. So you do get a bigger image 
and more clarity on that image, but it is zooming in on the 1080p display. One of the things that I noticed with the Sightmark uh, Wraith IR is that when I did digital zoom, it became very noisy and pixelated. Uh, 640 by 480. I, sorry. I think I was saying 360, but I meant 480. Yes, you were saying 360. Which is funny because I'm literally looking at the stats right now because I put a table in here so I'd remember. Um, so the digital zoom creates a lot of artifacts and pixelation, Savage. Mm -hmm. yes. Which everyone knows, right? Yes. So this basically zooms in on the LED, but then you also have a 4X digital zoom. So the optical zoom goes from 2.8 to 7.6X. And then the digital zoom is another one to four X. So what you're left with is basically just a really good looking image that you can see uh, and that you can zoom in. So the optical zoom is going to be right here on the back of the optic uh, where your normal optical zoom is on an optic. Obviously they have the diopter so you can do, I think it's minus five to plus five. So you can basically focus on the screen that's inside of this thing. And then out here at the end of the scope, you have the focus ring. Um, I messed with it a lot. So there's a, a bunch of statistics that I think are important to people. This does have a picture in picture that you can display and see a much more zoomed in. So you can basically have your zoom at a normal level. And then the picture in picture displays a much more zoomed in digital image. Uh, just like a TV would. This has, so the net D slash millikelvins that this has is under or less than 25 millikelvins, which is very desirable. I was looking at some like FLIR thermal sites, the ATN Thor 4, um, Trigicon Reap IR, the Sightmark Ray Thermal, and a lot of them are anywhere between 25 and 50. And what you want, what is desirable for the net D slash MK is going to be less than. This has a 12 UM, uh, 12 pixel pitch, which is the resolution of the sensor. And you're a 12 pixel bitch. The lower that you can get it, the better. <laughs> I don't remember what the site mark was, but this this one is actually uh, better than that. I will say that the best one of the best parts about this is that it has the menu is extremely easy to use. So basically, you have menu on the left knob which also has a button in the middle that you press to record. Uh, and then the top knob is your selections when you're inside. Yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> you, you said knob. Nab. <laughs> knob. You nab. Uh, so when you're inside the menu, this actually changes your options. But when you're not inside the menu, this changes whether it's white hot, black hot, color, rainbow, uh, you know, all the standard thermal stuff. And then on the right side is your digital zoom. So right here is your digital zoom. So you can basically do your optical zoom here on the back near the objective lens. And then your digital zoom is going to be on the right hand side. Has a bunch of different reticle options, has a bunch of different reticle colors. Uh, it has recoil activated recording, which I believe is like 10 seconds before the shot and five seconds after the shot, which is really quite handy. Uh, I noticed that when I was out coyote hunting, I would have to hit record, remember, and then have a 17 minute clip because I forgot to turn it off. So the recall oh. operation is kind of nice. And uh, the price on this one. So like I was comparing it to some, some other stuff. The price on this one is more in line with what thermal is, but still in my opinion, incredibly inexpensive compared to the features of other things that are comparable to it. So 3,799 bucks. Woo. Thermal's expensive. Like, did I, did yes, I mention I wanted one? <laughs> you did. Okay. You did. I want um, like I said, I've been messing with this literally most of the day. And um, 30 millimeter tube, it comes with mounts, comes with uh, items that you can record with. Now, it does record and take pictures as well. It's got 32 gigs of internal memory. And again, like optical zoom is not a thing that a lot of them have. And even though it's not a true optical zoom, it is a very interesting take on it that works, in my opinion, very, very, very well. Uh, so the OLED display inside, I mentioned already, is, is 1080p. And one of the other cool things about it is it takes 
18650 batteries. So 18650 is what all my flashlights take. So I have a bunch of those kind of just sitting around and uh, it, on one 18650, it will get eight hours of use, which is that's, great. That's decent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it seems pretty good for a thermal. Yep. So with three of those batteries, you could basically have a full day, a full 24 hours of, of usage. Um, let's see. What else am I missing here? Like I said, I, I really did. Oh, uh, A, B, C, D, E, five separate zeros which I think is important. So if you're using different ammo, you can zero with one ammo and save it as a preset. And then if you're using a different ammo, you can save that as a preset. Um, or so if pretty you're shooting good. sub and supersonic. 100%, which is literally what I use That's it for. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, recoil activated video, a built-in mic. I have not tested that yet other than just kind of recording around the office. Uh, it's waterproof. And you know what? 640 by 360. I was right. So the resolution pixels of the sensor <laughs> is 640 by 360. Uh, 50 millimeter objective lens. Uh, it weighs 2.6 pounds, if I recall. And detection range, meaning it can see heat over a mile, 2,600 yards. Uh, the video and photo resolution is 960 by 720, which is not going to be like super, super large or anything, but I think good enough for, for most things. It's not 4k or 1080p. Uh, that's the one thing that I would like to see higher. And I don't really understand the technology, uh, reasons behind that. Um, it has, let's see. Yeah, I think that's just about it. Honestly, um, tons of features, uh, what I was looking at compared to the site mark that I have. And again, like basically double the cost is well, well above what I have actually used in the past. So I am very excited to get this out and do some hunting with it. And I don't know. What do you guys think? It seems I mean, I've cool. never messed around. Yeah. I've never really messed around with thermal. It's always intrigued me and I'd like to, I guess I'd really like to research the technology and figure out how it works, like what components they use, just so I'd have a better idea for myself. So I don't know how to gauge its value, but I mean, if it has everything you say it does and works as well as you say it does, sounds yeah. great to me. Yeah, uh, I, I want one. <laughs> yes. So I agree. I think we're going to have Ryan from Rick's on the show next week. Uh, I think that's the the launch of this, but I'll definitely have some time behind it. Uh, TF says, does it record farts? Or no, I'm sorry. Super Gorilla Glue says, can it see farts? Vince H says 12 and 17 pixel pitch are common. I haven't seen anything for sale better than 12. I agree. Uh, they claim on this one that it is also 12. And... I think 17 is what my site mark is, if I recall correctly. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I went to the bathroom during the, your conversation. Did you mention the battery life? Uh, eight hours on an 18650 battery. Nice. One of the cool things is the lens cap here. Switch to this. Uh, not the lens cap. Uh, the turret actually is where the battery goes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So as I do that, I realize that the battery goes completely through this main yeah. part of the body. Yeah, that's what I was noticing. That's crazy. That the thermal stuff is basically going to all be here in the objective lens, and the other the the LED screen and everything else that's in here is going to be kind of in the rear of this, just connected by by wires. Which you know totally makes sense. That's like how thermal stuff is set up. That's cool. Yeah, I, you know I didn't want one until I saw you put the battery in, and now I want one. <laughs> as i understand you have made it fairly clear that you want one but they are cool this is is by far uh it exceeds what i kind of hoped for because having gone out and actually done the coyote hunting and seeing what the other guys have and seeing how clear this one was like it's good it's surprisingly good i think the sight mark that i have we were able to see deer out to like 1600 yards but we couldn't identify what they were we just saw heat signatures walking around 
And with a detection range of 2,600, like that, what's a mile? 1,700 yards, 17 something, 1,760 something. 1776. I, I only know Imperial. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it is, uh, I am, I'm really stoked about it. Uh, and it's got some other features like image enhancement and uh, stadia measuring, meaning you can basically range things by, you can range things by size in here. So basically if you've got one foot, it shows you lines Stadia ranging is what it's called. My bad. Uh, JB Weld asks, does it have Wi-Fi? It does have Wi-Fi and an iPhone and Android app that connect to it. I also messed with those today and they, they worked just fine. It was actually very simple to get, get it to connect. Uh, JB says 1600 yards. <laughs> Travis S says maybe plow guy. Dave wants my Nissan and parts truck for 3,700 to make two Nissans in his stable. Yeah, it's um, it's good. I'm very impressed with it so far. I'll get it in the field soon. And, you know, for the price, I was trying to compare price versus like features, which is a little bit difficult to do, but I was able to put together a list. So like the Trigicon Reap IR uh, that, ATN Thor five is like eight grand, but it's got a laser range finder. It's got a ballistic calculator in it and all that good stuff. So for the price, I truly think that this one is, is really good. Uh, it, it's very comparative. I looked at some other stuff, uh, like the EOTech X six forty, I think it was. And which is around the same price, but that's like uh, binos. So for a rifle scope, keep everything really small, uh, under three pounds. Uh, I think this is going to be fan freaking tastic. Travis S says 1760. So I think I said that. Is it American? No. Actually, are any thermals made in America? My, my, uh, no. Made in America. Let me just double check this. Cause I actually don't know. Uh, ATN says American made, but oh, there you go. I would be shocked if that was actually the case. I actually don't believe that. Is it made or assembled <laughs> in America? <laughs> right. Uh, but you know, I compared this to some ATN stuff, and it didn't even it didn't even compare to the stuff that I was looking at. So again, I don't know. Uh, very anecdotal. Uh, the Super Yoder. I don't know how much that one is super yoder which is the bearing optics super yoder how much is that that thing's enormous good lord night vision outfitters that's thirty eight hundred dollars as well so same price and that has a two to eight magnification i don't know if that's digital or optical and again, like I think the uh, the Super Yoder has a 12 uh, UM pixel pitch, 640 by 480. It has a 35 millimeter lens. This one has a 50 millimeter lens. That one has four groups of zeroing profiles. This one has five. I mean, I guess I'll just wait till the Alibaba version comes out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they, they look pretty comparable and the price seems to be pretty comparable as well. JB says Incendus thermal clip on $3,200 made in Texas. There you go. That's an American one. Um, Super Yoder is 45 to 4,800 says Vince H. They better drill oil for the polymers and plastics with American oil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Krista B says Armacite built in America. Uh, JB said that he sent back the clip on. So anyway, wow, well, Sean. So you were like way wrong. There are tons of them. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. I don't know a whole lot about this stuff. So yeah, I am very excited about this. I will be doing some hunting. In fact, I believe in October I will be hunting some animals in Texas under nice. this specific optic. Uh, right around the 
second week of October. Some kind of deer or something. I can't remember what the hell they are. But yeah, uh, I'm pretty stoked. And having actually done it now and kind of having a better idea of what I want, I um, I think that this is going to be a really good thing. Oh, nil guy. Nil guy in Texas. Nil guy, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that is the uh, Rick's Night Vision Thermal Leap L6 Rifle Scope 3799 on the website and uh, I can't wait. It's going to be cool. Now, Nick, what is your gear chat? Nick is gone. So <laughs> wow. I mentioned, uh, last week I mentioned that RMA defense has had their NIJ certification for their 1155 plates uh, basically canceled by the NIJ. I talked to a bunch about like what specifically was going on with that story. And RMA has now come out specifically with their, their side of the story. Uh, the blog post is titled RMA vehemently disagrees with NIJ safety notice. 05 2023 to level four model 1155. It's on their website website. It's all over Reddit and everywhere else. They literally show that there is no penetration, uh, not just by water jet cutting of it, not just by x-ray of it, but there is just no penetration on this at all. And it really brings up an interesting point. We talked about it a lot, but I just wanted to put a link in the show notes for anyone who is actually curious that you can clearly see that there was no penetration and no true failure on these plates. And it's, it's one of those things where I think that the NIJ tech made a mistake. He went down dug some things out of the clay. They replaced the clay backer for the, the armor testing about once a year, I believe is what it is. They had an NIJ inspector on site when they analyzed the, the plate, both in the water jet and the x-ray. And he did not see a, a penetration. Um, so, a lot of people like read this information and came to kind of the same conclusion that we did that, that it appears that the NIJ made a mistake on the penetration because not only did they dig some stuff out of the clay that God knows how long that's been there, but that they were able to recover almost the entire projectile and the penetrator out of the plate that was sent back. Um, so it just seems like there was no, no true penetration here. And this is kind of a big deal. Like, if these things are true, this sounds like a rape case, <laughs> dude, <laughs> it, it actually is. It actually is a rape case. Uh, the rape of, uh, you know, American trust in this governmental organization uh, that appears to have made a mistake and has doubled down on it. It sounds very familiar to us on, on this show. Aaron. I knew that was an attack on me, but I, I used my uh, my uh, RMA shield to defend myself from your comments. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know what to think. I think you know what to think. You know what to think. I do. I think that the NIJ is corrupt, just like every other governmental organization. I just want to know why. Why? What? I mean, obviously, they're wrong. Obviously, why? could be somebody got bribed. Well, I, but why? But who would do it, and why? I what, don't think that whoever whoever would get the contract. I think it's sheer incompetence. One hundred percent, I'm with Jeremy. I think it's sheer incompetence. I think that the tech made a mistake and literally just doubled down on it instead of admitting fault and doing a retest. It was one plate out of all the lots that they sent. They literally tested. They did a recall on that lot, which I think only six plates had been sold. Uh, they tested all of them. Nothing failed. This one clearly didn't fail. And I think when they got it back, they, uh, they, NIJ sent it back to them in a marked box. The guys put the box in their vault because they were not allowed to open the box until there was an NIJ representative there on site to go through it with them. Uh, Vince H says, didn't the Buffalo shooter wear RMA plates? Yes. That, what, that is true. What, um, I would like to see the history of this tester's uh, results 
in the sense of how many times has he screwed up and he's afraid if he screws up one more time that he's out of a job or just like even so let's see Man, it was is he a, is he a nepotism hire i don't you know, know. <laughs> how, did, how did this guy get his job and, and what are his qualifications so you can see here on the the picture that i'm showing on screen and if you're listening if you go to the show notes uh there's links to this this article with all the photographic evidence you can see that there were eight layers of the para aramid uh backer that were still intact i feel shitty for the guy who had to count them <laughs> i mean one two three four five six seven eight it's not that hard i just did it see i feel shitty for you though <laughs> jb in the chat I feel says, sorry for your mother jb in the chat says rma could be lying going got to go to court though or got to go through court and that is it is a possibility however the nij guy was there when they analyzed when they cut the plate with the water jet when they x-rayed the plate he was there there was an nij representative and rma is saying look clearly there was no perforation i believe is how they referred refer to it and even here's this the the back of the plate where you can clearly see uh, oops no penetration there a little bit of deformation but no penetration at all in the back of the plate so could they be lying pictures of a plate or pictures from sean's wedding night oh ayo God, there was there was perforation <laughs> on his ssb <laughs> where's the penetration sean yeah i don't know man i don't know <laughs> you. look at that whoever whoever can make a hand model right there those are really nice fingernails yeah he's got good cuticles yes um there like x-ray evidence on the website so it does draw into question so you can see here, the x-ray is pretty, pretty good. JB said they're only showing one plate. They had four total. That is not true. That is not true. There was not four failures. There was one failure. The only company I know of that had four NIJ failures was HESCO. So JB, I, 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 you're, you are wrong on this. There was one, one plate that failed. And if you, if you can prove me wrong, I will absolutely own up to that, but I've studied this or not studied. I've looked into this in detail because I have some of these in for testing and it is one failure. That is it. So yeah, I don't know. NIJ testing loses a little faith. One of four in the test slot. Yeah, but only one perforation existed what he's saying is okay i'm, I'm going to be jb here for a second okay what jb is saying four were tested right one failed yeah but we don't he see says, any, but we don't see any serial numbers so maybe they're showing the ones that didn't fail and not the one that did fail only one plate was shipped from the nij to rma and that was the one that had a perforation so yes RMA sent four plates. Only one of those failed. Allegedly. Allegedly. There's no serial number. Hmm. Okay. I feel like there is a serial number, but I can't prove that. And I don't recall seeing. And look, I, I have no. Well, there, there it is right there on the screen. Serial number two zero two three zero three one zero zero one zero. Yeah, yeah. Zero. I, I but are there any photos of that serial number on the plate with it di oh. displayed there? You sounded like Bender one zero one 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 zero 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 one zero. Yeah, <laughs> I thought yeah. I saw it too. So JB, you are right that RMA is providing this the evidence here. I will say that they had an NIJ guy there when they did all the this analysis. And that he could come out later and say that they're lying. The NIJ could pretty easily provide their data, but they won't because, you know, black box government organization. I do agree, JB, that I don't see any of that in the pictures, but I can very likely get pictures of that. But yeah, I agree. There, there's no, there's no serial number in, in the pictures here. 
the thing that has to happen, I think, is that RMA does have to sue the NIJ at this point. They have to, because in discovery, like all of this stuff will be brought to bear in court record that are basically, you know, the, the, there will be that truth. On top of that too, it's also, you know, if, if they are right, if RMA is right, not only do they have a case against um, the NIJ for, for wrongful, you know, revocation, revoke, revoke, revoking of their their status they also have a defamation case revocation De- defamation defamation thank you there's so many so many occasions where it's going on right now yes so jb says i'm not a bootlicker but rma and blake walter have, have lost my trust and i i could i i've come to the complete opposite of that like i i think that they're the ones actually showing like hey this is bullshit and yeah you could say that they're liars but that just seems weird. Like NIJ silent. Bring the receipts. Yeah. <laughs> RMA, like, hey, here's this very well, well documented email and paper trail and analysis done in front of the R, the NIJ. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to provide an update. So Nick, you're back. What's your what's your gear chat? I am back. Uh, my gear chat is the Dakota Tactical The One SD cage. Um, so everybody knows what the MP5 is, yeah, yeah, uh, everybody knows what the MP5 SD is, yeah, or people do, uh, yeah, it's an integrally suppressed MP5, it basically has a very short barrel and a like handguard tube thing that comes off the front of the receiver that wraps around the barrel. And then there's a suppressor that sort of nests down in there. Um, and the barrel is like ported and all that good stuff. Um, anyway, uh, I, I, I haven't call of duty, it's, but it's a burst. It's not full auto. It's kind oh, of, yeah, I hate that. It's stupid yeah. because that, that four end tube that slides up, around the suppressor is part of the receiver you can't really like there aren't a whole lot of options to change out hand guards um the the standard is like a little rubber slip over grip thing um previously there has been a quad rail available from uh like bnt i think it's mentioned in this article uh yeah bnt um that you take the rubber portion off and then you can clamp this quad rail over the top of it, over the top of the, the tube. Um, the quad rail is of course a quad rail. So, you know, like it's a little heavier and, um, bulkier. So, uh, what Dakota tactical has done, which Dakota tactical is a builder of MP fives. Um, what they, uh, what they have done, is they've created a new cage design that functions the same as the original design. Um, the original design has slots in it, which I imagine are like a combination of weight savings and maybe there's some sort of heat transfer or something that goes on there. Uh, I, I don't know how well that would work with the rubber over it, but anyway, um, at the very least, weight savings. Uh, what What... Dakota Tactical has done is rearrange and reshape those slots in the tube so that they will line up with M lock. And then they have made a, uh, like a two piece clamp on or screw on, um, M lock four end that goes on the MP5 SD. And then, you know, your suppressor still nests down inside there like it's meant to. Uh, but now you have the added benefit of M lock. So you can, you know, like put, lights and lasers and whatnot on there that's uh, it's a little lighter a little less bulky than the quad rail yeah pretty neat yeah i kind of like that i wonder this will fit like any sd uh no it's got to have their their uh tube their cage i think they call it oh, okay which is um, this part here, right? Nope, that's the handguard. This part. So go up. That's also the handguard. 
Um, wait, where the cage uh, is. Portion that is around the barrel right now. Okay, well, now mm -hmm. you're at the top. Sorry, uh, you cut out, so I just kept scrolling. This right here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That one, or you can go down one more picture. Um, that's a better image there. So that uh, that cage, see how the cuts on it are different than the standard one? They're uh -huh. like longer and, and thinner. Um, so those will line up with the M-lock slots in the handguard. The standard okay. cage uh, will not. That's pretty cool. So it's the it's the cage or the tube and the handguard uh, that you have to have both of them together. Damn. So 135 pretty, pretty bucks cool for the cage, though. but their handguard yeah. is like another 272 bucks. Yeah. Still. It looks like you could if you wanted to uh, just go with the the rubber, but I'm not sure why you would pay for the fancy cage and then just use the rubber. Right. Defeats the purpose, right? Yeah. That's pretty fancy. Dakota Tactical does a lot of MP5 stuff, right? Yeah, that's their thing. Uh, they're, uh, I think they're like the people for MP5 SD builds. Like mm -hmm. if you want an MP5 SD, then they are, they are the ones. It's very sexual. Um, I like yeah, it. pretty pretty neat. Way out of my price range because not only is it an MP5, but also it's like a, a semi-custom parts built MP5. So, you know, yeah, pretty expensive. Yeah, it, people that work like that do custom MP5 stuff, man, so pricey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pricey. That's why well, I like. Well, it's such a niche, niche market, you know, where people are who already bought into that market are spending a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Unless you get like a PTR or something. And then you're like, uh, dude, PTRs aren't cheap though. Let's be honest. I mean like 1600 bucks. Uh, dude, the, the, uh, century arms, AP five has been selling for like eight ninety nine. Well, that's actually a really good deal. Dude. It's a, like unheard of man. Absolutely unheard of. All right, uh, that will do it, I believe, for Gear Chat. Which Aaron brings us to F food time, Sean. Food Nutri time. Survive. <laughs> Went camping, had their drink sampler pack, came back with nothing from the drink sampler pack. Everyone, really? Was, yeah, yeah. Everyone literally was, I was like, Hey, does anyone want any of this? And then I had none for myself. I want some sampler pack. No, oh, fucking backfired on me, dude. Don't, don't you do it. Too <laughs> <laughs> uh, nutrient survival makes survival food and drink. Aaron, what would you say the difference between them and regular survival food is? I would have to say the nutri nutrient um, base of the object versus the quantity of filler in others. So it's healthier. Yes. I agree. I, with I tried to, I tried to sound technical about it. <laughs> it sounded good, but no, I, I 100% agree. It's healthier. We lived on it. Uh, we did a 30 day challenge, nothing but this and water. And Aaron did it again with Savage and Jeremy and yeah, like ended up the month healthier than when we started and even jeremy ate some of it jeremy what was your favorite flavor i can't remember uh the homestyle scramble homestyle scramble. i lost 25 pounds right i was in such a calorie deficit because <laughs> you guys were like no 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 you can eat more you can eat more and i'm like no i'm gonna eat what you guys eat uh, and, <laughs> I, and like i was but it was like 1200 calories a day yeah because it was five servings yeah and, you know the thing was is like i there were times that I felt hungry, but it wasn't like I was starving to death, which you oh, would I was think. fucking starving the whole time. The difference is like size. You were eating the same thing that we were like eight inches taller or seven inches taller and freaking, you know, I mean, what do you weigh? Pounds, 10 pounds heavier? No. <laughs> what do you weigh? Like three, 300, 300. Yeah. So when I finished the first month, I weighed 224 or something like that. 
Yeah, I went from 300 to 275. <laughs> That's so awesome. So health, survival food that gives you all the nutrients and the vitamins that you need. And Jeremy survived 30 days on it at a severe calorie deficit, doing the same things that he does right now. Like that, that speaks volumes. You want to hear a fun story from that? I do. So we had, we had cheat, cheat meals that we could do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, for my mother-in-law's birthday, um, I picked one of my cheat meals so that I could enjoy dinner with everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're in the Midwest, so we got Olive Garden because that's like Midwest fancy. <laughs> and, uh, I, because we were counting cat or like I was looking at calories that whole month, I added up the calories of the meal that I ate from Olive Garden. That one meal was 3,200 calories. Oh my God, bro. Sounding like a brush hog to me. Sounds like a hungry hippo to me. Vince H. Jeremy's base calorie requirement is probably about 4K. Probably. I probably about eat right. about 4,000 4, a day. Yeah. And you burn it too. Like, I mean, you just, you're bigger than all of us. When I go to the gym, every, I go to the gym. Yeah. Day, he burns it into fat. <laughs> <laughs> Very says, efficiently. Says the guy who's only weight loss, uh, the guy, the guy whose uh, weight loss regimen is shit his brains out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, at least I'm not ironically, <laughs> ironically <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Nick's health yeah, plan. Yeah, you currently okay. are. Yeah. <laughs> Nick's health plan is debilitating disease. <laughs> I, you I, too. So, you know what? Can I, have these results. I didn't, I didn't see my brother like all through my one brother was like really freaked out by COVID and I didn't see him for almost like three years. What? And then I, and I saw him and he was like fucking skinny. Like he was like, he went from probably like 275, 280 to like 240, 235, Whoa. somewhere around there. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, what he's been like eating healthy with COVID. He goes, no legal meth. I got put, he goes, the doctor put me on Adderall. <laughs> Damn. I was like, <clears throat> I was like, Music oh, can start working for me. No, no, he fucking <laughs> he put he lost a shit ton of weight. And I was like, damn, dude, you look good. And he was like, Yeah, legal meth. Yeah, dude. Remember when Aaron, <laughs> Aaron and I cheated had a slap contest and that's what he did to win it? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I still too. have a, a whole prescription of that just sitting around, Ooh. but because I have the I have to take medicine for high blood pressure now. Because I'll take of, it. Yeah, no, I'm saving <laughs> it up for when I need it. There'll be a time right. when like I need to go 40, 50 hours without sleep. Yeah, I just, uh, I thought about going on the uh, cocaine diet, you know. No, because they, yeah, they'll, just... make, they'll make a movie about me called like Cocaine Bear. <laughs> There'll be a yeah. lot of sweaty men in that movie. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know what bear, what, which bear you're talking for, about. For when Jeremy has to go hard for 40 or 50 hours. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be Cocaine B A R E. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Nutrient Survival, use the code WLS10 to get 10% off your next order. Yeah. Ha, Jeremy's gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's time for gunfights. Nick Lynch, take it away. Okay, uh, let me stop my camera and then share my screen. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys tonight's theme. Okay. Um, it's Aaron's gay because <laughs> I had you what? Huh? What'd you say? Huh? He said Aaron's gay. Moving on. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I went to Gun Broker. I had an idea for a uh, the the theme tonight. Um, no matter what I searched, I couldn't get results for some reason like i closed the window opened a new window uh every time i would search it would just tell me that there were no results mm. so um i ended up instead of typing any keywords in i just selected some boxes some choices from different boxes and then searched and then picked from that okay uh so these are like in a random price range. I think they were all sold in uh, Wyoming. Um, I'm sorry. Did you say there's no theme tonight? Not really. No, it's just. Oh, that's my guess. That's my guess. No theme tonight. Okay. <laughs> uh, but they're all neat because they are guns. Um, 
this first one is a Mauser post war Bolo C96 broom handle 763 by 25 semi automatic pistol CNR eligible. 20, uh, uh, excuse me, 72 bids. It says it's got about 83% of its current metal finish. It's thinning at all the edges. Uh, there's a little oxidation that's infrequent. Um, the sides of the grip have more no notable erosion and pitting that's mostly concentrated, uh, that's mostly concealed, excuse me, by, uh, by the grips when installed. Um, yeah, so I mean, they, you know, it's got a little wear. It's an old gun and it shows did it. Did they say post war? Um, post, yeah, which post war? war. Which war? Uh, oh, well, the I don't think they made them after the I don't think see they... the bolo. Wouldn't the bolo ones be shit? Would those be between World War One and World War Two? I don't know. That's a great question. It's a uh, so here's my question: Is this an NFA mm -hmm. item or not? It's a CNR. No, I said no. NFA. I, I mean, either either way, it wouldn't be a uh, NFA item. So, well, okay, because like some are and some aren't, <laughs> depending on when they were made, and and if they're if they're written from the registry, because it's got yeah, the, but the stock the. Right, but the the bolo ones are are, uh, are older than than that. As so I it's got to be post World War One, um, not post World War Two. Sure, I guess, but it, it's not an FA. Um. Okay. Oh, let's see. Like Jeremy pointed out, it does have the uh, wooden holster that doubles as the stock. Uh. Let me get to the second photo here. Here's a closer photo of the second side. It's pretty handsome. These are pretty good looking guns. If you disagree, you're wrong. <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah. Agree. <laughs> our, uh, our order is Jeremy, Savage, Sean, and then Aaron. Um, 72 bids. Jeremy, what do you think this sold for? Thirty-five hundred. All right, Savage. What do you think this sold for? Twenty-three ninety-nine. All right, uh, Sean. What do you think this sold for? Two thousand eight hundred seventeen dollars. <laughs> Two thousand eight hundred seventeen. Wow. Hardly yes. specific. Well, he has a spreadsheet, so I can say whatever I want. You can. Uh, Aaron, what do you think this sold for? Uh, what was Jeremy's price? 35 hmm. And what was the uh, next highest dollars. price? Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's well, fuck. Okay, so uh, Jeremy was 3500 Sean was 2817 Savage was 2399 Thirty-two, fifteen, with nineteen cents. Uh, thirty-two fifty. Thirty-two fifty and nineteen cents. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, thirty-two fifty. It is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this. Sold if I get for... screwed up because I was closer, if I was a um, dollar off. <laughs> Yeah, you're actually uh, seven cents off, Aaron. Really? Who? Um, so Sean no. wins. No, uh, <laughs> it sold for twenty seven hundred dollars. Yes. Mm. Um. So that puts Sean one hundred and seventeen dollars away. So he wins that. Nicely one. done, Sean. That was a wild ass guess. Pretty damn good. One. Yeah, 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 it worked out. I mean, I, I right. legitimately have no idea what these things sell for. Yeah. Well, it was a, a good guess. Thank you. Apparently. Uh, one, of, one of the guys Unless that used to cheating. work for me has a, a pre-World War One version of this with the stock. It's all serialized together. It's all parts matching, and it's in beautiful condition. He paid five grand for it. 
<coughs> nice. It's a lot of money. It's it a beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. All right. Uh, moving on. I think I'm lagging. You are pretty badly. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to go to the next photo, but my computer is uh, screaming right now. Why don't you start describing the next gun? He can't. Because I don't know what it is, Aaron. I have to see the picture first. I didn't didn't know. I thought maybe you had like a little cheat sheet of everything you had written down. Like a no, I have everything written down too. Oh, what I actually did not expect that. That I you didn't expect that I have everything written down. No, like I just figured you had it on your computer because I would never write it down personally. Hog muffin. There is no theme tonight. Oh. Yes, if any guesses on the theme, there is no theme. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not written down. It's um, it's typed, but yeah, I didn't physically write anything. Um, oh, I figured out what's going on. For some reason, uh, it, my computer has decided that I need to do a backup right now. Oh, good. <laughs> backup everything. Um. Well, this is a cool time for this to happen. I don't remember how to stop this. So. (laughs) Wow. We could be like the listeners and you just described the gun to us. Uh, (laughs) Like charades, except for guns. Yeah. I I got a... uh, a text from the owner of Gideon Optics today. He was like, hey, nice uh, job on the Gideon Optics, immediately followed by a Swamp Box ad. (laughs) <laughs> i was like well it just worked out that i think i think my answer was sometimes bad things happen <laughs> uh nick is doing a backup oh, he's doing that backup not. let's talk more about this uh c96 broom handled uh mauser you know what i find interesting aaron is that he was that the listing is like oh 80 Three percent of the original finish is left. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a weirdly specific. Almost like my bid. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Uh, you know, those guns are just gorgeous, though. There, I, is, I am surprised that someone's not remaking those currently. True, but better, but better. Yeah, same. That'd be dope if somebody did. Yep. <laughs> it's, it would be so hard. It would be so expensive to machine all that out. I mean, yeah. All right. So, what if you? Because that's all. That's all. Uh, uh, forging. Right, but Is I it... mean, you could you could modernize it though. I mean, you could CNC machine it, but like, fuck, dude, that's going to be so expensive. In what way would you modernize it though? Like, what would you do? Oh, I'm glad you asked, John. Thanks. If I had control of it and I was to remake this firearm, I would make it a striker fired and make it in five seven. <laughs> Everybody goes five seven. Like and the reason why I go five seven it, or three fifty seven because the magazine is in front, you don't have to worry about grip size. Three fifty seven sig. Or? No, three fifty seven magnum. Yeah, but Are you're you- talking. You can yeah, even but, go with fifty but it, AE. Well, but it's a it's rim and magnum card. is difficult. No, but I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying it, you, okay. I understand. Three fifty seven is a rim cartridge. You would run into rim lock and yeah. problems in feeding. All right. Well, then. 50 well, unless AE. you put a rotary magazine in there. Also, uh, you're gonna have to put one hell of a fucking spring in there to go anything bigger than like uh, seven six three miles or nine ooh, millimeter. Ooh, on the sheer I, fact that there's no bolt mass. No, I got a better idea. Make it make it long action. Well, I was saying, you know, if you're going to redesign this this <laughs> gun, you'd have to, you know, long the, recoil, you, man. Just... But having that re- having a receiver with the magazine, if that this is obviously top fed, but if you could get a magazine fed one, the whole idea is that you could put a larger caliber in there, and you don't have to worry about grip size. You just have to worry about magwell size, and then making sure that it'll feed right. It's like make it three fifty legend. Man, could you Dude, imagine would, having a oh. pistol that's long recoil action? I don't think that's ever been done before. Probably for good reason. No, I don't think there's any good reason not to. I think there's a great size. Reason. 
Because all right, if you want to put a really powerful cartridge in there, like Aaron's talking about, you'd yeah. have to beef that motherfucker up so bad it'd be fucking unwieldy heavy. Uh, well, I mean, you've got uh, the Desert Eagle. Yeah, and that's an unwieldy heavy gun. But that, and they're also gas operated with a rotating bolt. And if and if you are going to fucking redesign this gun, it, it's a, it's a potential possibility. So you're going to make a completely different gun that looks like that one. That's yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Which, I mean, I would be down with. He makes a PC charger, and he's like, look at this mouse C96 <laughs> Mauser I made. I made this. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, not, I'm talking bigger than 9mm. <coughs> we gotta, we're going to pause on gunfights just for a minute because Nick has to reboot his entire life. So let's talk, let's talk about uh, some Swamp Fox optics. Let's do that. What would you like to talk about? Hold on. Should we talk about Gideon first and then immediately do an ad right after? <laughs> so, no. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Uh, so, did you get the new Swamp Fox Optic Optic in? Which one? Uh, the, the long range one. Uh, the LPVO? Oh, I guess mid range one. <laughs> the LPVO. LPVO. Yeah, so the War Horse. And did you get one in? I have four of them. Oh, one for each of us. That's so cool. Ooh, which one's the War Horse? Is that the 34 mil tube one? That is, uh, uh, yeah, I think it is actually. Yeah. So it's, uh, the, they're coming out initially with the one to six War Horse, which is the LPVO. So can you get me I, a War Horse? I definitely can. Yes. I would like one, please. Yeah. Remind me tomorrow. And I can get you one without question. So the War Horse is going to be that. Uh, it's going to have a lot more light transmission or light absorption into the tube, 34 millimeter, bigger tube, more light. That's a good thing. Um, so far, I have been very impressed with it, the one to six. And again, they'll they'll come out with uh, more magnification later. This is just the initial launch. And I think that it's going to be everything that everyone has wanted. A lot of people ask about it. A lot of people are very interested in it. And I have had the the absolute pleasure to not just have them here and shoot them on a couple different guns, but even to go film with them. Uh, last week, my first camping trip of last week, I was with the Swamp Fox dudes in the middle of the forest. And uh, did you take the, the Swamp Fox RV? No, dude, like you need a four wheel drive to get where we were. It's got four wheels. It does have four wheels, but they do not drive all at the same time. Uh, wait, it has six wheels, doesn't it? Maybe. Are I there two know. in the back? Either way. Not an off-road vehicle. And okay. uh, yeah, so the Warhorse, awesome. I have gotten a chance to use it a bunch. Uh, it'll be out very soon, but in the meantime, the Raider, which is the 1X Micro Prism. So if you have astigmatism, uh, it is great, but it's also great if you don't have astigmatism. Etched reticle, super good. It works fantastically in full value sun. Uh, go check them out, swampfoxoptics.com. Coupon code WLS, the number four ever. We'll save you that scratch. Okay. Now, while Nick is rebooting, we'll take a minute to talk about uh, WLS's lifestyle, Aaron. You're muted, maybe. Yeah, I was actually. I was fucking around with my gun. Uh, which has, <laughs> I, was, I was looking through my Kraken. Your butt Kraken? Yeah. Uh, my Swamp Fox cracking. Hey. And lifestyle. So, um, hey, uh, David Hoggs tweeted the other day. Oh, my God. I support gun safety, but there's no such thing as a state public health emergency ex ex exception in the U.S. Constitution. And you know what? For once, he's right. There isn't. So well, we, go ahead. That, that was odd. I felt I felt weird. You know, uh, I don't know how much of the story do you want to go into because I, I, I linked it there. Basically, what had happened uh, was that the governor of New Mexico just decided because somebody got shot, obviously, a legal concealed carrier or open carrier was the one who was doing it, uh, but they decided to suspend all open and concealed carry in Albuquerque, I think it was Albuquerque, New Mexico, and some surrounding counties. For well, 30 days to so like punish all gun owners because some fucking illegal douchebag did something illegal, 
with a gun that he probably acquired illegal. Therefore, everybody who is a law-abiding gun owner has to fucking suffer because of that bullshit. Well, the way it was worded was weird because it was like every county that has uh, a hundred or a thousand gun violence uh, uh, situations per hundred thousand population. So it's really <laughs> only Albuquerque. Well, because because they're also including suicide in that. So right. it's you know, are you scared of all those people going around in public and shooting themselves? No, you're not afraid of that. That's not a public concern. I mean, it so, is a is a definite concern that needs to be dealt with in a specific manner. It's not a danger to the public. Well, this is the the epitome of you know we have to do something. It doesn't matter what it is. We just have to do something so it looks like we're actually doing anything, and. I think one of the the weirdest things about the whole thing is that she literally said like that someone specifically asked, will this affect criminals? And she basically, not even basically, she literally said, no, I don't think that it will. So who are you trying to penalize here? Criminals clearly aren't going to listen. You know, they're not going to listen. You already said they're not going to listen. I don't know what else to say about that, but so, but you're just trying to do something. So what the people who elected your dumbass are, will, will actually do something. And Aaron, you mentioned that this hasn't happened. So I did some research today and like during the COVID-19 pandemic, various governors declared, st declared states of emergency, ordered lockdown, business closures, mask mandates, and Hurricane Katrina, the Louisiana's oh, hold, governor. Hold, hold up. When did I say it didn't happen? Uh, you said that was not a pejorative. Like I wasn't saying you said anything wrong. You just said that. I, I don't remember specifically what you said. Uh, okay. Cause if it's going to be detrimental to me, I just want to make sure that I 100% no. Okay. No. I'm like, am I being attacked here? I'm just so used <laughs> no, to it. No, no. I, I just I got looked, started. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. I looked up examples of when things like this may have happened. So Louisiana's governor issued orders uh, that led to gun confiscations in new Orleans after Katrina and yep. uh, civil rights era, Southern governors used emergency powers to quash civil rights protests, citing law and order. Uh, in the aftermath of 9-11, in the wake of the attacks, some states enacted emergency measures that affected various liberties, labor strikes, and some, in various instances, governors have declared state of emergency to break up labor strikes. Um, and I thought that that was kind of interesting. So then I did some research on, like, what were the outcomes of these things? And... Uh, let's see where where did I make, take those notes? Yeah, so in Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, the immediate backlash was gun confiscations led to public outcry. The, a federal judge issued a restraining order to halt further confiscations, and Congress later passed the Disaster Recovery Personal Protection Act of 2006, <laughs> specifically prohibiting such confiscations in future emergencies. Uh, let's see for COVID nineteen. Uh, tons of uh also lawsuits and things like that and th that changed um so like this is just not a thing and the question that i was specifically researching was can a governor suspend constitutional rights for public health emergency and i just couldn't find any examples of specifically that but especially like in the in the world after the Supreme court's Bruin ruling. Like this is just not a thing that happens. It's not a thing that can happen. Uh, this governor has just given us handed us probably the best thing that has ever happened to gun owners in a long time. Well, and, and people immediately realized that she fucked up, but even though they supported her, they're like, Ooh, I like where you're going with it, but I think we're a little too soon. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it's interesting. And so David Hogg, you know, tweets that you can't do that. Ted Lou uh, from Lou. Oh, that California, yeah. basically verbatim of what Hogg said, which makes me think that they're planning something, right? I I do not believe in any world or existing uh, timeline that Lou and Hogg would say something like that that could potentially be damaging to you know the anti gunners platform and message. So what I really think is that they're saying you can't do that because they're, they're just planning to use it against us in some other way. Like they'll be like, well, you can't suspend constitutional rights uh, for state of emergency. So the governor of Texas can no longer like close the wall. 
but it's interesting how decisive they were on it. Like they didn't mince words. Normally, if somebody says something extremely anti-gun, but might be on the extreme side, they they'll even sympathize with it a little bit. This one, it was just no. And it was it was almost like the pro gun side's version of no, how strong it was. So that that really makes me think it's coordinated. And if I, I I'm not a conspiracy dude, but I would almost say that like this was a planned event per se. Like I think they meant to have this governor say that in order to see what kind of reaction they would get from the public. Mm-hmm. And then they're using these guys to walk it back. But I think she's, I think she might just lost herself the next election on that one right there. I hope so. But honestly, the people that would elect such a dumb whore probably will reelect a dumb whore. So like, I have no faith. Yeah. The dumb cunts that that voted for this dumb cunt are going to be like, Oh yeah. Woo! Yeah. Exactly. She's doing something, yay! Because they're all dumb cunts. Yeah, I I, I 100% agree with with Jeremy on this. Now, clearly, she doesn't believe that this will stop any crime. She knows that it's only going to affect law-abiding citizens. There's one step further: is like, you know, people that are like, "Oh, thin blue line, support cops, stuff like that." I'm like, no. I. I said on Twitter, I think that I was like, you know, they will not follow their oaths. They are all basically, you know, they'll issue press releases, the sheriffs and the cops and all that stuff, but they will not actually do anything because in my opinion, that this governor is violating her oath of office, which well, is- it goes beyond that. Uh, there's a section 1984 laws regarding official oppression. And it specifically deals when a public official uh, out, I guess uh, I, I guess usurps authority or uh, assumes authority authority they do not have and under color of law. So they basically make a declaration despite it being against both state and constitutional law. And they try to enforce that action upon the populace. And that is by nef- definition, legal definition, that is official oppression. So she could get sued. If not every gun owners in the state by everybody in the state, for official oppression over that stupid fucking statement that she decided to make. Well, you know, New Mexico, as I understand it, also has something in the state yep. constitution that any yep. right that is denied a citizen, uh, the government of New Mexico can be liable for $2 million per citizen. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I'm about to move to New Mexico. Bro. <laughs> we finna get them reparations, bro. She's about to get cornhole like a mofo. I mean, goddamn. Uh, Super Gorilla Glue said 18 U.S. Code uh, 242. It is criminal to knowingly violate civil rights. Yeah. And also well, stated to distract from the two rules up for comment in the Federal Register, which I believe one of them is. Oh, what, what are those? I forget. Bert, well, okay. So it's a moot point because this whole thing um it's only was supposed it's only being enforced by the state police um but the bernalillo county sheriff announced he will not enforce the governor's concealed carry and open carry ban he said it's unconstitutional blah 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 blah. it won't do anything you know all the shit that normal people think Mm -hmm. but he wasn't charged with enforcing it anyways i mean i'd like to see him come out and say it but like in her own orders, it was literally only this will only be enforced by the state police. Well, so he wasn't even who's in it, doesn't matter who's enforcing it. She uh, declared I, I, it. I'm saying the sheriff saying right. he won't enforce it is a moot point. I like the I like the solidarity, I like the I like the message, but like it's kind of a moot point because he wasn't charged with enforcing it anyways. True. And I, I actually did look it up and I don't believe that a sheriff that the sheriffs in the state actually have the ability to arrest a sitting governor uh because i was like you know if they if they if they stood by their oath they would they would arrest her for for doing this but it turns out that i don't who does i don't know who does like do the people at some point you can't be above the law and if i I own property in new mexico so can i just go there and arrest the governor because she clearly broke the law so as a property owner in new mexico could I just go do it? Like if I fight my way through all her bodyguards and I get there like a fucking, wow. 
and be like, yep, you're under citizen's arrest because like who has that authority? Somebody should have that authority. Yeah. I, I don't know. Would that be federal then at that point? Uh, well, right now, I think it's only civil, a civil I mean, liability. If you, I mean, does the attorney general have the ability to issue a warrant for her arrest? Because uh, he has the ability, but I, <laughs> the, not the desire. But like, he he is the supreme law enforcement agent in the state, the attorney general. That doesn't so, mean anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm aware of that, but if he, but if he's like, "Yep, you broke the law. Here's the code that you broke. We have a warrant for your arrest." Is yeah. it the AG? Because yeah. like, it would have to be. The, right, that's the only one I can think of. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. The, the two things that are up uh, for comment, public comment in the federal register are the ATF definition of FFLs and the powder storage logs, uh, says Super Gorilla Glue. Thank you for that. Which, yeah, you know what? I don't recall seeing any news about that. I just searched Pew Report, and the only thing I came up with was the uh, federal register publishes new stealth universal background check rule for public comment. Cool, it has the word mm. stealth in it. Yeah. Is that stealth. like shadow band? Probably. <laughs> which, which I am. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so I don't know, man. It's like a it's a whole thing. Um I think but yeah, I'm building I, a new house. You know, I think what's gonna happen here is so NAGR, National Association for Gun Rights, Aaron's fired. Uh <laughs> they again. They, Feel they submitted the first lawsuit that I saw. I think I have also seen the GOA and Second Amendment Foundation have also submitted lawsuits. I could be wrong. I think GOA is definitely one. And then what's going to happen is they're going to go to court. And because it'll expire before anyone actually ever gets a court date, then New Mexico's government will be like, uh, well, it doesn't actually exist. So this case needs to be moot like New York has done with some of their bullshit where they removed laws that they're being sued for and said, well, this law no longer has standing because it's moot now. And that'll probably be what this is. So I think she'll get away with it. But also let me ask you this. If you are in New Mexico and you comply with this unlawful order, are you a cunt? Yeah. You're a pussy. Uh, I think you're both of those things. Times like it's two clearly unconstitutional all i would be doing is walking around open carrying waiting to be arrested and then sue the absolute piss out of everybody you know none of the cops want to do that they're like this this bitch is so fucking stupid like nobody nobody wants to be on the on the hook for that one yeah well you're gonna be able to sue there's the always cop as there's well. always there's always one person who wants to be on the hook for something well like it's <laughs> it's literally it's literally like what first amendment auditors do that you know walk around doing something innocuous wait for the cops to get called you know, because they're filming from a public road and then and then the cops show up. Inevitably, there's a fucking, you know, bitch fit about everything. They arrest him illegally because what he's doing, like, and they know exactly what the law is, at least some of them, the smart ones. And then they get arrested and then they sue the fucking department for a shit ton of money. And they just do that every couple of years. Like. So the. It, a bunch of New Mexico residents and citizens have absolutely now staged a open carry protest in old, old city Albuquerque today. So they're doing it. They're standing out there. Not one person was arrested, cited, nothing. And they were all open carrying long guns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So good on those people because fuck this shit. Interesting. Is there an, a new city, Albuquerque? Well, uh, Old Town, Old Town, Albuquerque. You oh. know how like some places have like a new kind of populous uh, city center. Uh, San Diego, I believe, has a very similar setup. So why don't they go to the new part where it's nice and pretty? Why don't they go to the shitty part? Because I don't know, dude. Yeah, Ask exactly. I, I can't. They're not here. You are. I am sure that there is a reason they did it probably because that's where like the, I don't know, the state house or whatever is. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. So I am very interested to see where this goes because this is one of the most egregious things that I've seen since we've been doing the show. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it feels like Katrina all over again. 
yeah worse well it's it's i'm i'm gonna say that's gonna be significantly less bad in practice than katrina it's it's more bad in rhetoric than katrina well i mean mean, not even not even that bad because they were seizing the weapons in katrina this is just banning conceal and open carry yeah i mean it's it's, they're literally there literally needs to be a law that if you if you kill government officials uh because they're trying to pull some bullshit like that like you're free and clear i think that's in texas you can you can shoot a cop as long as it's legal yeah, for, for a well i mean technically reason. if it's legal you're able to shoot anybody if it's legal <laughs> <laughs> okay i think there's a specific set of circumstances though yeah i can always tell when we've got to the end because we just start saying nonsense <laughs> <laughs> well you want to talk nonsense then we're not going to talk about night vision optics because they're all fucking serious. <laughs> they, they are indeed. Uh, if you have, in, if you're in Albuquerque and you have a concealed carry and you have night vision, don't go out at night because people will see the glow in your pants. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like where this is going. Keep going. No, it's slower. Like behind me now look like tritium. <laughs> Sean's JOI instructions. <laughs> 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 is that actually what that stands for yeah that's exactly what it stands for what the fuck does that I, uh, we'll do it after the ad read i guess <laughs> we, we we talked about it. yeah go i ahead. know i'm just like what what is this is this the thing that people are concerned about people you know people like fucking asnmr shit too so yeah what's the n for uh, <laughs> aaron's fired <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, night vision makes tritium uh, sites. We talked about it. I know a clip got released about Nick huffing tritium, which is probably a terrible idea. Don't do that. But, you know, night sites are not for pitch black. I think they're for everything other than that. Now, when I look over my nightstand and I see the three dots glowing, I think that's dope. And that's awesome. And I can find, I can easily locate my gun and grab it if I hear uh, someone at the door or a bump in the night, whatever it happens to be. And then I identify my target and whether I'm in the dark, whether the target, whether the threat is in the dark, whether the threat is in the light and I'm in the dark, whether I'm in the light and the threats in the dark, I can see and locate and find my sights, no matter what that situation is. If my red dot battery goes dead, I can see and find and identify my sights and get a good sight picture on whatever it happens to be. Night Fission, N I G H T F I S I O N dot com. Coupon code at WLS is life saves you 15% all day, every day. I, at this point, I just assume Nick has died. I, I'm guessing the same thing. Like his computer didn't die, it just killed him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, jokes on you. We knew this shit was coming with AI. Yeah, and, and the twist. It was like fucking uh, M. Night Shamalot wrote this fucking story. <laughs> and twist it. <laughs> Nick, okay, well, I think I might have done something wrong <laughs> because AI killed you. Is that why? Okay, uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron's Alley. All right, let's talk about uh, last week. Savage had a great story about a federal judge out of Northern District of Texas issuing an order blocking the ATF's classification of force reset triggers as machine guns. Awesome. But this week on Tuesday, or last week on Tuesday, U.S. District Judge out of New York wrote that court concedes, uh, concludes that the government is likely to succeed on the merits of claims, adding the company placed tens of thousands of customers at risk for criminal prosecution and loss of their own firearms, and stating that the uh, the triggers are actually machine guns. Aaron, when did you add the story? I added it way before you added any of your stories today. Both of those things. You need to fucking wake up early. Like I did it at like 3 a.m. last night, to be honest with you. Okay, because that's when I'm usually awake. Is this one of your stories as well, Savage? Yeah. Okay, well, let, let's talk about it now then. Uh, as I understand it, Rare Breed never had a letter saying that these triggers were... They never had a, a opinion from the ATF, and they lied about it. Is that what I understand to be true? I don't know about that. That goes I, way beyond... <laughs> My I know, historical knowledge of the story. I know uh, Rare Breed had said they had an AT, a former ATF agent confirm that they are not machine guns. That will be Dan O'Kelly from 
whatever group he's a former atf agent he gives everybody those letters okay so i know that they i know that they discussed it with him or at least a former atf agent if that's him that's him i'm not gonna say it was because i don't know for sure i don't have all the facts that's it but um but now when one federal judge says they're not machine gun parts and then the other one says it is a uh, machine gun parts it's getting fucking pretty ridiculous it's all judge shopping at this point it feels like because one's out of Texas, one's out of New York. Well, yeah, and of course the New York one is going to rule <laughs> in favor of the ATF because they don't understand how fucking anything mechanical works. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, neither judge probably understands how anything mechanical works. Is you can't really go that route. I mean, they're judges; they're 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 there for law; they're not for there for mechanical engineering. I mean, yeah, but at the same time. I mean, that's the point. Some, that's all. A, a judge, a judge in New York is yeah, but you're supposed to be, be more. You're supposed to be smart enough that when an expert goes up there and says, "Does the law say this?" Yes. Okay. Does that mean this? Okay. Yes. Okay. So that means this needs to happen every time, right? Right, judge. Yeah. Okay. Right, I, I well, don't this disagree. Happen- so they have to be that smart. They don't have to be a mechanical engineer and figure out how to fucking make the thing. They have yeah. to be able to understand English and yes. go, "This is this correct." This right. is not this, correct? And I'm okay. agreeing with you. This and is me agreeing that, with you. That's literally as long as the fucking court case needs to last. Right. But for some reason, we got this whole pomp and circumstance around it where they just go, law says this. This is what this does. It does not comply with this. Therefore, it's not this. Case over. I like how Crypto Redneck, Crypto Redneck says Texas for the win as usual, though the New York Giants did just kill the Dallas Cowboys 40 to nothing. My God, who cares? I'm just pointing out that Texas doesn't always beat New York. Okay. How do you know that a, that a game with teams from a state that both teams from states you're not in, how do you know the score? Uh, I saw it, it was a record setting game on my news feed and I was like, Oh, what's this all about? And that's okay, the reason that why sense. I saw it. Yeah. Right. So, so I guess, I guess maybe we should listen to, to what the, the judge actually tried to say here and that they said uh, one thing the defendants knew, but did not tell their customers this is what she says. She's claiming they knew uh, when they when they launched their FRT 15 sales campaign 2020 was that it uh, that its predecessor device, the Air One, had been classified by the ATF as a machine gun. Now, it, certain aspects of the Air One were modified in its redesign. Okay, but the essential force reset trigger feature of the device, enabling automatic fire. As long as the shooter maintains pressure on the trigger, that's not true. This is not what happens, uh, which defendants knew was the reason the ATF had classified it as an illegal machine gun remains unchanged. So let's go back. It is not a single pull of the trigger, no matter what the ATF may claim, because the trigger will all it's in uh, sorry function single function of the trigger because the finger still has to apply pressure and every time the trigger is pushed back by the pressure of the finger each time not one time each individual time the gun goes off it does not shoot more than one press of the trigger it's just a faster pressing of the trigger so the judge does not understand how this thing works the atf is lying about how it works and this is all bullshit and they should go to jail the judge in the ATF, not the, not the FRT guys. Mm. You know that that is the weird thing here is that the AR one trigger, the like that that facet of this story. Even I, if they had classified it, who the fuck cares? It does not fit the definition. I agree. I, with I, th- that. I think the ATF is arguing that all you have to do is put pressure on the trigger. Even though it's being put, your fingers being forced forward by the forced reset, all you're doing is holding it down, is what they're saying, and that suddenly it becomes a machine gun because it's not, it's not the pull. They're not, they're not arguing the pull of the trigger. They're arguing the pressure on the trigger is what it they. Doesn't it, matter. It's it I, I understand. It functions I, I, listen, every time it goes back and God forth. Damn it, it's man! You're not fucking listening to me. I right? am listening. I, I'm, I'm not saying dis- it's irrelevant. <laughs> okay, I'm not disagreeing with you. All I'm saying is that's their argument. I know it's irrelevant. It doesn't fucking matter. So. The ATF previously classified the AR-1. Rare Breed repurposed the patent for the FRT of the AR-1. Is this is this true? 
What is Maybe. the Air One trigger? But I actually don't also know. redesigned it. They they repurposed aspects of it and redesigned it, so it was a completely different trigger. Did they and buy they the just, rights to it? I don't know that okay. part. I don't know. If anything, there there could be an IP issue here, intellectual property between FRT and whoever else. That's fine. That's totally separate. This is it's still not a machine gun, no matter how they want to m- fucking monkey wrench it around it's it's not a machine gun yeah i i agree i'm just trying to understand the ar1 trigger and like how it differs and why this matters like clearly they're trying to make it matter right and the reason why i point out what the atf is is trying to argue is so that you can defend yourself against their argument you know they're defining they're defining it as a as a of pressure on the trigger versus pull of the trigger and that there is semantics you know is what they're arguing little things when in fact the letter of the law says pull of the trigger and they're saying well the pressure on the trigger they're trying to read function of the trigger they're trying to redefine it and i'm just trying to point that out well i get that i get that and i i'm still saying it's (laughs) whatever their argument is it's still irrelevant because it doesn't fit the definition i understand and we all i agree with you however this judge doesn't this judge is not looking at it that way. That's how that. That's how this judge is making their decision. Yeah, because no, they're judge, fucking no, retarded. This judge didn't talk about that at all. This judge said that Rare Breed knew, but did not tell their customers that the predecessor device to this, that apparently it was based on the AR1, had been classified by the ATF as a machine gun. Yeah, like I just read you're that. saying the yeah. judge did, said this and did this, but that has nothing to do with what the judge's actual decision said. So, like, wrong. I just, I just read that. Yeah, or are you I talking know. to Aaron? I'm talking to Aaron. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. but he also said what the ATF argued. And I, that's yeah. what I was pointing out. And that's what the, the judge has to base his arguments on something, not not their own. They, they, the judge bases what is in front of them. And one of the, what's in front of them is the arguments from both sides. And one of the arguments was from the ATF. And that's what I was trying to talk about. Yeah, I don't see anything in this article about the press. I don't see anything. Did, in the did judge Savage just say the pressure on the trigger? You guys started talking about it. I'm trying no, to figure no. out where you guys No, no, no. So, uh, let me see. A certain asp- it says, certain aspects of the AR-1 were modified in its redesign, but the essential force reset trigger of the device enabling, it says here, enabling automatic fire as long as the shooter maintains pressure, pressure on, the on the trigger. The, right, that's what I'm talking which about. Which is a lie. That's right. a lie. Correct. Right I there. agree with you. But that's what, yeah. they're, that's what they're arguing to the judge. Interesting. Interesting. It's weird because, like, I was just so I was right, you were wrong. No, the point I was going to raise is that Congress defines it, like, it doesn't matter what the ATF says, right? This is a law, yes, it exists on the books. Like, you don't get to like share your interpretation of it. That's weird. That's Sackett versus EPA. I mean, we see this all the time, judges to define shit, and that's judges judges are are, judges are defining or, or you know, deciding what a law means all the time. They're no, the Supreme Court, yeah, they're interpreting. The Supreme Court is the ultimate is the ultimate arbiter of what all inferior courts are supposed to do. Now, the inferior courts may disobey the Supreme Court, but it doesn't mean they're right. Uh, further in this, it says that uh, defendants represented to the court that Ray Reed Firearms is a design company that sells swag like T-shirts and hats, not firearms. Cool. And I want a t-shirt. They hat. aren't selling firearms, are they? No. I mean, as I, well, this is all the dumb semantics of the legal system. Weird. This is the dumbest shit ever. And <sighs> the ATF and that judge need to go away. Yeah, I know. And we'll keep bringing you guys this conversation, like as, as more things are figured out. And, and, and uh, before Sean gets 150 e, uh, text messages and emails about, my I will opinion, anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, like I support rare breed. I support these fucking force reset triggers. I'm just trying to argue the fact of why, why we're having so much issue with it, trying to see it from the other side, what kind of arguments they're making. I'm not, I don't agree with those arguments. No. And I, I appreciate you doing that, Aaron, because it, it takes, it takes having to go against your own instincts <laughs> to try and bring that kind of argument to the, to the table. So I definitely appreciate you doing that. Thanks. Savage. I mean, the idea is know your enemy and it, yeah. to know your enemy, you have to think like them. And this is kind of the process. Not, right here. No, it's not thinking like them. It's what kind of bullshit can I make up because I have to do with my overlords tell me to do. 
They know they're bullshitting. They know they're wrong. But it doesn't matter because the judge doesn't care because the judge is against guns. So they're going to make any bullshit argument they want because that's what the DOJ told them they had to do. Even though yeah. if they had any integrity, they'd look at them and go, no, you're barking up the wrong tree. This is fucking retarded. The law does if you want to pass a law, talk to Congress. But they have no integrity and they're just doing they're just following orders and making up a bunch of bullshit. It's not you like know, they truly believe this. Do you know what the most insulting thing about this whole issue is? Is that we're paying taxes to the government who sets out specifically to infringe on our rights, which we have to pay more money to lawyers to fight against them. And we're still paying for the legal fees for the state's lawyers of the government that's trying to infringe on our rights to fight against us. Uh, that's the like, most insulting shit I have ever seen. It right reminds there. it reminds me of uh, Clinton when he's like, well, what do you mean by is? You know, is this picking <laughs> yeah. one little thing? Sure. You know, yes. and then fighting that, and that's what they're doing. It's all that they're doing. They <sighs> find one little thing and they try to nitpick at that. You know, you know how know. hilarious that is because I've I've been uh, making video lectures for a business law professor for the past month and a half, and he's using that specific example <laughs> and several others that are really good. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just the point of what I see as our legal system at this point is just breaking down and. And it's not it's not for the people. It doesn't seem like it's for the people by the people anymore. That's for sure. Yeah. <sighs> using, but, our, using our money to, to take our own rights away. I and know. We have to spend our money to fight them when they're using our money for their only like it's such like there's gotta be a there's gotta be a different way to do that. Yeah. yeah. It's like the the dude who did the first Ponzi scheme. In fact, that Ponzi schemes are named after it, right. <laughs> really like the same shit that we're dealing yeah, with. He thought he had a great idea though. Oh I mean, yeah, he did <laughs> for him uh, selling international stamp vouchers. Right. Is that what it was? Yeah. Uh, so the, the Alfredo Ponzi or whatever his name was, he, <laughs> they, they he got, he was looking for investors and sent, to some companies in Europe. And I believe as a, a investor from Spain messaged him back with interest. And inside that thing was an international uh, post voucher, which basically allowed whoever received it to then put it on a letter back to Spain. And basically it was the, the sender of the original letter could pay return postage and those little vouchers would sell, but there was a whole market of for, for the vouchers, like, it, you know, uh, Poughkeepsie, would have different rates than some other place would have rates. Uh, so be, there it was, you know, you could just take vouchers that you got in and, and buy them from a place that sold them for a low cost and then go sell them back to the government at a place that had, uh, that paid a lot more for them. And so he would have people invest and that literally, and, and then on top of all that, not only is it a weird thing in the first place, but he never actually bought any. So he was just taking all the investors' money, oh, paying paying the old investors with the new investors, and yeah, it was it was a whole thing. Rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, one hundred percent. He literally could have just done the fucking legwork and been fine. Yeah. Well, and then uh, Bernie Madoff, uh, like, oh god, that guy, yeah. billions of dollars. Like, I I think he owes his investors like two over two billion dollars. Yeah, never never gonna pay it back. No, Gone. he's in jail. He's in jail for like 200 years. Well, yeah. you know, you know what, you know what is a good investment, Sean? Tell me. Uh, blue alpha gear because I'll tell you what, man. Those belts just keep on going. I'm wearing one right now. But, you know what? I want to talk about something different okay. than belts because they just released some more fanny packs. Corduroy. Fanny Corduroy. Pack. Hell yeah. God damn it. I bought one. Did you really? Yeah. I saw I saw him and I was like, ah, you know, I, I I really want one of those fanny packs, but I just I just you know I don't want to be mocked by my children. They Dude. mock me enough. So I I literally I every day these days I carry in a fanny pack, and ninety nine percent of the time it's slung across my chest like a little sling bag, so my gun sits right here on my chest. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to order one. And then I looked at him again, and the Mojave Gold got me. 
That is so, a sexy one. Yeah. So yeah, not only will I be fanny pack carrying, but it'll be corduroy. If you get two of them, you can start a fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not allowed by law to wear corduroy pants. <laughs> Colorado oh, yeah. fires. <laughs> They're doing some good stuff. And <laughs> running it, we're running a 2K. <laughs> yeah, you've heard of Heyman. It, it was actually the Heyman fire. They were like, hey man, your fucking eyes <laughs> are burning the forest down. So yeah, yeah. anyway. And uh, they blame global warming. <laughs> right. <laughs> actually, it was a park ranger who was burning love letters from a broken relationship that started the Heyman fire. It seems oh my legit. fucking god. But yeah. if you want to burn your own fire, dial or uh, use coupon code WLS69. And uh, you get some, you know, saves you some scratch on your next blue alpha purchase. And if you use coupon code WLS69 while you're actually performing 69, you get herpes. Oh, you <laughs> can only get it once, though. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't get herpes, I give it. <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, goodness. It's time for going ballistic with Savage 1R. I think Nick actually may have actually deceased himself at this point. Nick needs a new Yeah. You should give him a Chromebook. Oh, my God. No. (laughs) Fucking Chromebooks are the biggest trash. If you ever spent a dollar on a Chromebook, hit that like button. Oh, God. How many times? Because I got kids in school. (laughs) The, The computer froze. Dude. (laughs) <laughs> now all the Chrome, I, I think I have four or five Chromebooks. Mm-hmm. I don't know why because they never worked. They're like completely incapable of even running like Google Docs. Yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. Like I can't even like half the stuff my kids want to do. Like yeah. you can't do it on the, the thing. It's like it's a it's an internet machine, and that's about it. I'm yeah. Like you have your phone, use that. I literally just shoot mine now. I take you, them to the range every time I go to the range and I just shoot them and then I throw them in the trash. I mean, you could do more on your phone than you can do on a fucking Chromebook. No, you'd be amazed how much gold is actually in a computer. Uh, uh, go fucking dig them out of the dumpster then because I throw that shit away. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, back to uh, going ballistic. So I think we all, we're only down to two more stories from me, uh, that is. So uh, the first one on the docket here is the this interesting case here where an ATF inspector went and seized a gun store uh, customer records, you know, the 4473s, without a warrant. Now, there's a few FFLs in this podcast, and I think we're you, you all who are FFLs, are familiar with the law. And the law states that when you're having an inspection, the uh, the inspector is allowed to go through your your logbook. They're allowed to go through your 4473s and uh, see whatever documents you might have on location. What they're not allowed to do is to take said documents and leave with them. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically illegal for them to do. But this guy did it anyway. So. Um, I guess uh, last week, uh, Kiliton Tactical uh, joined a coalition of FFLs led by Eric Blanford of Iraq Veteran 88 and have now uh, filed a lawsuit against Biden administration and uh, their zero tolerance policy for FFLs. So recently, the Biden administration has issued some kind of edict that basically says if there is any kind of mistake, no matter how small, revoke FFLs and throw people in jail. <laughs> and so the ATF is basically throwing all the laws to the wind. Not only have they been keeping an illegal registry of all the guns by digitizing the records again, illegally, uh, but now they're just frankly stealing the 4473s from the FFLs for no reason. Like there's no warrant. There's no, in, there's no investigation. It's just a standard inspection. They're like, we're just taking this. Yeah. Thoughts, guys? <laughs> Dude, of changing uh, professions. I have the IOI inspection handbook. <laughs> Don't ask. It literally talks about not removing anything. And the, the one I have is a few years old. But it literally speaks about not removing any records from. Would from you like site. to loan it to the specific agent that did this? 
<laughs> no, he already has a copy. <laughs> oh, MLN News has a copy too. So apparently it's not a, not a big thing. And they leaked uh, May 25th, 2022. They leaked the, uh, maybe that's where I got it. I think I've had it for longer, but. Yeah, so they're not supposed to take any records. In fact, those records belong to the the FFL, Jeremy, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like they they can analyze them, they can look at them at any point in time, but like it's your ass if those records get lost, <coughs> lead to they never allowed to take them off site. Um honestly, I don't know. Um I know that you have to like if you if you refuse to do like a trace or anything like that or you know, if an ATFA, like they don't need a warrant to come in and ask for that shit. Right. Like it's technically government property. Well, they're not, they're not, you're not refusing to do a trace. It, right. They're not allowed to, I mean, it specifically says in the book that they're, they're not allowed to take your property off site without a warrant. I mean, this is without a warrant. You need oh, a I meant warrant. to come see them. Oh yeah. You don't oh, even, they some, don't need that to come see warrant. them. Inspections all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we know what we signed up for, but them taking them, I'm like, yeah, it's like, all right, here, here's, here's, here's a fucking, here's a fucking, uh, 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 paper. You're going to fucking sign that, like, it says you're stealing this shit from me. Yeah. Because, like, if I get inspected and I don't have six months of fucking paperwork and my IOI is like, where's this fucking paperwork? I'd be like, that fucking agent over there, fucking, uh, this guy fucking took it all. No, yeah. I, I I got and a way what, to get. What to did it. you want me to do? Shoot yeah. him? <laughs> I mean, uh, I know I, I got a way <laughs> that this could be dealt with. For every forty four seventy three, they want a copy of, or or to or they want to you take. They can hand write it down. How about that? Each one. <laughs> Even then, I'd say fuck no. But like that's what you got. I mean, like what else are you gonna do besides just blocking them from leaving with it? Yeah, like, who, I, you I, can call the sheriff. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, I literally do not know what, and honestly, like, as FFLs, if the ATF's like, yeah, we got to take these, I know they're not supposed to, but damn it, like, are you going to die on that hill? I think it really might be a case where you have to call the sheriff and literally say, look, this is against policy. This is illegal. They don't have a warrant. They're taking this property. They're, they're literally uh, putting you in legal liability. Citizens Further arrest. Down the line. Citizens arrest. No, not you, the sheriff. I know, but you yell at the guy and just pull out your gun. So, uh, page fifty-five of the eight, uh, ATF Firearms Industry Operations Manual, page eighty-five, section seven, uh, item A. All other pages shall be returned to licensee. IOIs are not authorized to remove a licensee's records or copies of records from the licensed premises only for convenience purposes or other reasons lacking a legal basis. So yeah. So if they in, give you, but, but if they give you some bullshit legal reason, then they can take it. I mean, it says lacking any legal reason. So some bullshit reason. A legal reason would be a warrant. Well, there's other legal reasons too, Savage. Warrant is just one of many. Okay, what's the other ones? Uh, they feel like you you may have sold some guns improperly. You may have uh, information so in regards to they can to get it. a warrant. You may have, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or they I, just take it because they say that we have a legal reason too. I mean, well, I'm not I'm not a legal scholar. They could just tell me anything, and I believe it because I don't know that I don't know all the you know legalities of of reasons for or against. Maybe we should get a lawyer on at some point. I mean, we, we know, know one. Him. Matt, Matt Lurcier, get him on to talk about what legal options you have and what laws that the ATF is bound by regarding that kind of thing. Well, and you could also just subscribe to the Pew Report and get his thoughts on all this stuff every week, every Friday. Well, shit, you're right. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. This shit stresses me out. Yeah. Well, speaking of being in stressful situations, the next story, that guy had a stressful situation. So I'm talking about uh, Gilbert Grooms, which is an unfortunate name, but uh, <laughs> but okay, groomer. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, man, Ooh, God, God tell you a tough hand there, buddy. Uh, but uh, he had this interesting case, and I don't know why 
it ever fucking went to trial. So I guess in 20, June of 2022, uh, this Gilbert Grooms guy was threatening, uh, confronted and threatened at his job in the presence of his wife and children. So there's this uh, a friend of his brother-in-law, I guess, um, was hanging out in this parking lot where, where this guy works. And they'd been drinking. And uh, this guy who was his brother-in-law's friend was this, uh, I guess he's a bull rider. And he was basically a guy who just wanted to get in a bunch of fights. And this guy, Gilbert Grooms here, uh, has had a lot of injuries, uh, you know, back and shoulder injuries, and he wasn't in any kind of shape to get any fights. So he didn't want to fight the guy. He tried to get away from him. And then he went to his uh, truck and pulled out his shotgun so he could defend himself. And this guy kept coming at him and coming at him despite being warned. He, This guy, uh, Gilbert, made what I would call an error in doing a warning shot at this guy's feet to, you know, scare him away, which it didn't do. A guy kept on pressing his attack, so he got shot multiple times by Gilbert. And uh, then he claimed that, uh, you know, the, the guy who was being the aggressor claimed that he was the victim. <laughs> that all I wanted to do was fight, and he shot me. I mean, you know, whatever. So for some reason, the district attorney decided to prosecute this guy for multiple felonies, despite multiple uh, witnesses testifying and showing that this and i think there was even video of this guy um so they wanted to charge him with attempted murder first degree assault terroristic threats plus three felony firearms charges and this is the guy who is being attacked by a drunk criminal who had a previous history of violent acts like the government wants to fucking destroy America at this point because they want, they're literally aiding and abetting criminals. Like they are siding with the criminals. How Where did this take place? Uh, God, I got to look back. Is it South here. Dakota? Uh, South Dakota. I think, yeah, you're right. Really? You're in South. all places, South Dakota. I wouldn't. I know. Happen, right? yeah. I know. So listen, like New York, well, LA. Yeah. I can see believable that. South Dakota. You're not required to fight people, FYI. Like, yeah. no one can be like, I want to fight you. And you say no. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to fight you. Uh, well, you don't have to explain. Jeremy. Right. Okay, stop, <laughs> right, stop talking like you want to fight me. I don't want to fight you. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, like, I, I'm no, you just don't want to lose. <laughs> well, I don't want to get hit. <laughs> you know, by here's, you. Here's by the fun you. going to end up being the next guy that gets if, shot. If, if terroristic <laughs> threats is a, is a felony then then why wouldn't i be able to use deadly force if what you're claiming i like so i'm not allowed to shoot somebody because they're like i'm gonna fucking kill you well, no, okay, well but they don't but they don't have the means to do it but if no, somebody's so this, like this i'm gonna guy, fucking kill you yeah. and you're like bang and somebody goes but like he was making terroristic threats towards me which is a felony but it's a double felony like it's a worse felony because i shot him over no. it here, here's what he said that became the, the terroristic threat. If you harm my family, I will do this again. That's not a threat. He's saying, if you try to cause harm to me or my family, I will defend myself. That's not is a the, threat. Is the DA a Democrat? Hold on, I, hold on. I don't know. We should probably look at the fuck up because the DA is the one that deserves to be in jail for this kind of bullshit. So here's here's specifically the, the thing. They, they have this beef going uh the groomer guy or sorry grooms <laughs> Groom. literally <laughs> he's doing his job he's walking across the parking lot the other dude's sitting in his truck near the near his family uh the antagonist we'll call him uh the drunk guy sticks his hand out for a handshake uh gilbert hoping to you know put this beef behind them takes his hand the adversary grabs him and pulls him into the truck gilbert breaks free uh, Gilbert says doesn't want any trouble and says he's willing to put everything aside if, if the antagonist is willing to. Uh, the antagonist jumps out of the pickup truck, says he's going to fucking kick Gilbert's head in in front of his children. Gilbert mm -hmm. repeats he doesn't want any trouble. He avoids him, goes to his truck, and uh, 30 yards away from him and away from where his wife and children are parked. The antagonist spins out and slams to a stop in front of him 
jumps out of the truck and says, I'm going to kill you and your whole family. Gilbert raises the shotgun. The dude keeps coming. He fires at the dirt in front of him. The antagonist then runs back towards his truck. Mm -hmm. Gilbert, knowing that the dude has, uh, is known guns. for kind of keeping yep. guns and things, shoots through the windshield to keep him from accessing the inside of the truck. That right there is why there was a case. I don't think he was wrong. Uh, he also put a, put some rounds through the truck radiator to keep the the antagonist from using the truck as a weapon against him and his children or others. Uh, the dude runs to the back of his horse trailer and then doubles back towards him. Gilbert raises the shotgun. The man starts to turn to dive between the truck and trailer. Gilbert shoots, hits him in the left butt, butt, buttock area, buttock, as he turns. Back and forth around it, charges Gilbert again. Gilbert shoots him in the groin. Slows him down, goes to the back of the horse trailer and sits down. Gilbert tells him to stay put until the authorities arrive. Says again that he's going to kill Gilbert and his whole family. Says if he tries this again, he'll do the same thing he just did. Officers arrive. He hands the shotgun over willingly. The guy says, I wanted to fight. I wanted to fight. Gilbert repeats, if you harm my family, I will do this again. Uh, at the end of the video, the guy says, maybe next time you won't be so lucky. I mean... Like, how, if you are a DA, do you even fucking think of bringing this? Thankfully, Groom here, or Groom's had the wherewithal, and maybe he had a good lawyer, too, to go to a jury trial. Because, you know, what probably happened is the DA just wanted to get as much on this guy as possible, offer him a plea deal, and then, you know, say, oh, we stopped gun violence or whatever. This yeah. guy knew he was in the right. I, I assume he had a really good lawyer because it took the jury all of two and a half hours. And that's including lunch to find him not guilty of all charges, yeah. but fuck the government for even bringing this case. So, sounds like the jury just wanted a free lunch. Dude, this is an entire year out of this guy's family. This, like yeah. this is why I have second call defense. Like period. He did everything right. He didn't kill anybody. He tried to do everything in his power to, to get out of the situation. And ends up with six felonies charged against him. So and, uh, I think he had double up buck is what they said in the story. Uh, we had a Jeremy Jer uh, or yeah, Jeremy asking a different Jeremy asking a question about what Lodi used. Yeah. So it's just, know. it's crazy. That's the we, one you want for people. Yeah. We like shooting.com slash SCD uh, because God damn it. <sighs> Absolutely it, ridiculous. It, it's really for defense against the government. It's not against people. It's against the government. <laughs> Yeah. Jer Jeremy G says he, I wouldn't say he did everything right. He made a few big mistakes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, but, yeah, but I'm not can't fault the guy for the heat of the moment. 100%. Yeah. And you're the running on, you're running on adrenaline and emotion and you know, this isn't some shit you planned for, at least most yeah. people haven't like, yeah, I'm not saying, but like, that's the problem where like the letter of the law and the, <laughs> The letter of the law, the dude left witnesses. He said, "Yeah, his mistakes, dude left witnesses." Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that that is one thing. If you know, like, you know, somebody comes into your house and they're alive when it's all over, you know, they get to tell their side of the story, and if they're not, dead men tell no tales. So, dude, like, honestly, if you tell me that you are going to kill me, like, I have reasonable, I have reasonable consideration that you might do it that you mean what you say right in ohio that doesn't fly threats alone cannot be defended with with deadly force i am not saying that he should have done that but like he is under no obligation to not believe the guy dude i think it's, we should i'm especially okay since he's been assaulted by him before other people have been assaulted by him yeah long history of violence like dude i say we go back to the days where like you just shoot somebody and you're like what happened you're like well i uh you know, he killed my cousin and you're like, oh, so it was a revenge killing. And they're like, yeah, he killed my cousin down in Memphis. And you're like, and they're like, oh, did that really happen? And they go like send a wire to the sheriff over there. And they're like, yeah, yeah, he did. And they're like, all right, cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay. So next story comes to us from New Mexico. I know we talked about New Mexico and that their governor is a stupid whore, uh, but this is also a gun shop that is a stupid whore. <laughs> so dude goes in to a gun shop 
and he has a Palmer 80 and he's like, Hey, I'm looking for a holster that will fit my pistol. So he's under 21. He legally built the Palmer 80 by himself. So citizens under 21, obviously prohibited from buying a handgun from an FFL, but there is no federal regulation saying that anyone over 18 cannot build and possess a pistol. And this dude is also a military member. So he's at the store. He's like, I'm looking for a holster th for this. The guy behind the counter says, well, if you bring it in, we can double check it and, and see what holster it'll fit. Guy behind the counter said, sees no serial number on the gun. Asks the shopper for his ID. Customer is like, uh, okay. Customer's like, get fucked because that's the proper response. Yes. Customer gives him his ID. The guy's like, oh, you're under 21. No serial number. I'm keeping this gun. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and said, uh, we're calling the ATF on you. So oh, you was like, cunt. yeah, I saw this on Reddit. Absolute days cunt. Ago. Yeah. Saw it on Reddit a few days ago. And I was like, what the fuck? So I'm trying to find it's shh, God damn it. I'm trying to yeah, find let's name that shop. That gun yeah, shop needs to go out of business. Yeah. They do. You know, they are actual pieces of shit. Like this is not the first awful thing I've heard about shooters. Den. shooters Den in New Mexico. I believe it's Albuquerque somewhere around there. Yeah. So yeah. Shooters Den. I've heard multiple bad things about this place and now they're like basically stealing people's guns. Yep. So the guy wasn't trying to get them to buy it. He wasn't trying to get them to work on it. He wasn't actually doing anything and they stole his firearm. They should absolutely be charged. Uh, this dude. Oh, I would have stood right in the shop when he said, I'm not giving this back. I'd be like, okay, sheriff, uh, my firearm was stolen. Actually, the guy's right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he went home because he was like, fuck, did I fuck this up? Nope. Uh, but now he has filed a stolen property report with local police. Uh, the police retrieved the firearm from the gun store. Uh, has not given the gun back to the dude, but yeah, shooters den in Albuquerque literally deserves to go out of business. They have no business, uh, being a part of this community, like absolute trash, literal thieves. And if you have a question about something like that, figure it out. You don't take people's property. That's like, that's like when people come into my shop and they, you know, like hypothetically, uh, somebody <laughs> hypothetically, somebody doesn't understand the NFA. And they they put a pistol upper on a on a rifle lower, and they have no fucking clue. Wouldn't you wouldn't you rather educate them and keep them from getting in trouble so that the rest of us don't look bad and you know help your customer out and help them understand the laws and and not just like confiscate it? Like the only time I think I'm actually required <coughs> to do that is if the gun had a serial number and it was defaced. Correct. Because I was trying to think as an FFL, like we can choose not to sell a gun to anybody for any reason. Right. Like we need to be able to articulate that. Like this is the reason why I didn't, but well, we no, required. you, you could pick any fucking reason. Like you have that power. It's just bad business. Yeah. If you can't articulate a reason. Yeah. But we're required uh, to, to do that, but we are not required to be mm -hmm. law enforcement for any other goddamn thing in the universe. Let, let me ask you guys a question. This is actually a, 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 in the, the same vein. Say I have a uh, pistol AR mm -hmm. and I put a, a vertical foregrip on it, which would technically make it an AOW. Yeah. But, but the pistol grip is capable of going at an angle. No, you know, it's got detents on it because it has a, because no. it, it, no, because it has a, it, it can, can go. go. Okay. It's because it can go vertically, it's no go. I just, I just, I'm just wondering. Not that, and then, yeah, <laughs> I haven't done it. I just want to know. Yeah. So, what's your question then? Like, if somebody brings that in for whatever, like, are as an FFL, I'm pretty sure at no point when I was getting this this license that uh, that I took an <laughs> oath. Or, yeah, that I was deputized in any way in law enforcement. Like, I don't get it. This is absolute theft in my opinion. Yeah. Or like hypothetically somebody walks in with grandpa's old war rifle and it's a machine gun and they don't even know that like they grandpa had it on the farm for 80 years and 
and you know they're like oh yeah it's full auto and you're like oh do you have a tax stamp they're like what's that and you're like oh um like let's have a chat <laughs> yeah like well let's uh, we're gonna take a little hip pocket class here and uh we're gonna explain some shit and yeah. uh well, uh, hypothetically a lawyer uh from in albuquerque said the FFL in this situation took the personal property of another with the intent to deprive them of it, which fits the common law definition of theft. Even if the FFL thought erroneously that possession of the handgun was a crime, it would still not create justification for the seizure. Instead, the FFL appears to have engaged in bullying and theft. Having an FFL does not convey law enforcement powers. Quite the opposite, in fact. Here, not only is the FFL likely responsible for theft and taking the firearm, but they also likely violated 18 U.S. Code 922J, which prohibits the the receipt and possession of stolen firearms <laughs> double whammy yeah yeah so, i just like i i've been telling people the whole time like with the whole frame and receiver thing that uh when we were required to serialize them mm -hmm. if they were unserialized um i was telling people look if you put a serial number on it i can use that serial number I'm only required to put a serial number if you don't serialize it. So you should put a serial number on it. Yeah, it could like, be like J O I seven. No, N S N. No oh, serial number. <laughs> I told them all. To, I told them all to put N S N on it. Yeah, completely. And they were like, "What does that mean?" I'm like, "When a book, when a gun goes into my book that doesn't have a serial number, it gets marked in as N S N, no serial number." I have and, one, and yeah, I have tons of them. And uh, or I've had bunches of them over the years because you weren't required to put a serial number on a gun until 1968. So a lot of cheap 22s and cheap shotguns prior to 1968 did not have serial numbers on them. So I've had guns in my books that were NML, NML, NSN. <laughs> yep. No, no make model. little, no model listed, no serial number. 100%. So uh, I'm like, so you yeah. should do that. <laughs> Shooter's Den is a fucking lame place and deserves to go out of business for the or that guy does I, I don't know if he's the owner they deserve to go out of business if he's an employee he should be fired and charged and i bet they buy all their shit from cheaper than dirt fuck them oh damn that's cold brother speaking of <laughs> dumb idiots liberty safe Ooh. fuck them guys <laughs> guys Ooh. all right so they put out this just imagine being so proud of this that you put out a statement that's like made in a nicely formatted JPEG that says that one of the January 6th, the defendants, uh, basically law enforcement approached them saying that they had a warrant for the January 6th stuff, but the guy had a Liberty safe. And so the law enforcement asked Liberty safe for the, the, uh, a master code, uh, that I'll explain a little bit more in a minute and Liberty safe proudly supporting law enforcement handed over the code to this guy, this American citizens safe. So law enforcement could just go in and do what they needed to do. A, did you know that on all of the, the electronic keypads that the, the safe companies basically have a master, it's not a master code. It's a override code. Yeah. It's the same, oh, it's going to say it can't be the same one for all of them. No, it's not. A, it's not. Okay. A, I've learned. I think it's for each line. They have their own. No, I believe or it's maybe each line or something like that. It's yeah. by serial number. It's an, um, it's a, it's a override code based on serial number for each lock. So every, every one of those locks comes with two, the one that the end user sets or receives, and then the manufacturer override code. There's like two of the companies, uh, Securum and SNG, I believe that kind of make those keypads. And they both do it. So I think everyone was very surprised, A, that there was an override code that the manufacturer kept and stored. And without being compelled by any legal reason, would just turn over to law enforcement. They, they had a warrant. Yeah, they had a warrant. <laughs> yeah, so that's safe. But there was, no, there was no subpoena. There was no warrant provided to Liberty Safe for them to do this. They just did it because they were supporting law enforcement. So... Oh, I wonder what those boots taste like. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So they probably Fine Corinthian leather. They proudly put out the <laughs> statement like nicely formatted on a black background talking, you know, and the internet completely lost their fucking minds on them. And so, so they should. 
Yes. Uh, I agree. Now, Liberty Safe realizing that they had stepped in the biggest pile of dog shit that had ever existed and that a human foot had ever put its put itself in, reanalyzed their their processes and procedures and said, okay, we got that wrong. Going forward, we will not give over this master code to anyone to any law enforcement without being compelled to by legal means, whether warrant, subpoena, whatever it happens to be. Okay. There's that. Then secure it, who uh, we have one of their armory walls here. They stated that they give the customer both codes. And I think secure it did a good job in being like, yeah, that's bullshit. We don't do that. Uh, now Liberty also has said in their statement that they will provide a way for customers to remove the override code from Liberty Safe's records. So I have two questions for you guys. One is Liberty Safe's response good enough? Did they learn their lesson? And two, is it lame for Secure It to like step on step on the thing and use that to promote their own stuff? Or is it just like I they think I think every safe company that wasn't Liberty should have been like, should have taken the lesson that they didn't have to learn the hard way and put out a statement that says, yeah, um, so we'll never do that ever, 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 ever. And like, I think every other safe company should have jumped on that. I don't care if it's a dick move. Yay, capitalism. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I, I 100% uh, agree. I, I think Liberty did learn their lesson um, the uh, a very hard way. Um, didn't it, in the statement too, Liberty say we've, com we've always, um, complied with law enforcement in mm -hmm. the past, meaning they've done this before. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they were proud yeah. of it too, man. I was like, yeah. it's not too late to delete this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we did this in the past and we've done it too. We, we've, we've, it's basically like during the Holocaust. Yeah. We gave up a bunch of Jews. We're sorry. We won't do it anymore. Yeah. We won't do that for the next, the next dude that rolls through. Right. Yeah, you fucked up. You made the mistake. It's time to change your name and start a new company, but still make the same brand. Yeah, so Secure It basically said, I, I wanted to make sure I got this right. Uh, recently, Secure It was made aware and asked to comment on the situation involving the FBI and well-known safe manufacturer. FBI requested the access code uh, for, for an individual for whom they have a warrant to search their property. Their company protocols to provide these access codes to law enforcement if a warrant grants them access to the property. It is secure its belief in protocol that the protection of personal property and Second Amendment rights of American citizens are paramount. Our full line of fast access modular safes are not built with any override system, giving our customers full control. Freedom and liberty to possess firearms is the right of every American. Secure it will always put those rights first. So I think good on secure it for, for jumping on it because that was smart marketing. And yeah, so the question is, did Liberty Safe learn their lesson? Do we continue to keep them in the traitorous brands group or do we, you know, give them, a, give them a pass on making a big mistake? My, my next question in regards to all this is, um, did Liberty Safe inform? Is there in the literature that liter Liberty Safe gives you when you buy your safe state that they have a master code somewhere? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if it doesn't, then, whoa, that's really fucked up. It really yeah. backdoored you on that one. Yeah. So Savage, what do you think? Do you think, you know, is Liberty safe irredeemable? I mean, you know, sometimes people have very short memories. Sometimes they have very long memories. It just depends on the extent of the betrayal, I guess you would say. I'd say this is pretty big. And, and that's going to be a problem because Liberty Safes is also a very big brand in the safe world so i think they're going to take a significant hit pr wise and money wise it's just a matter of how long is that going to last for yeah yeah i don't know and i think about this all the time right like uh springfield and ruger and smith and wesson and you know cheaper than dirt like are the mistakes that companies make irredeemable? I think about this all the time and I talk about it a lot. I know I'm sorry. I just, yeah. And I don't know the answer. I, I do not know the answer. So I was curious. So let me ask you this. I'm just flipping the script a bit. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. What if the guy was a known terrorist? What if he was planning in the next 9-11? I Would don't you... care. Okay. Just want to just want they I'm just need pointing out a warrant for that specific reason. Called dangerous freedom. Like I don't care. Okay. That's all that's all that's all, that was my only question. Yeah. No, I know. And and I'm not I'm not yelling at you. Like I, I literally do not care. Uh it's the same with, you know illegal wiretapping and yeah at this point i don't care i don't care about the if it saves one kid i, I don't care about any of that what if it Freedom kills is kids? more important than anything uh the next story is not mine uh yeah judge just ruled in uh franklin armory's title one case so the issue of t- uh title one in california was the the department of justice of california refused to put Title One on the 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 roster because it wouldn't give them a definition of what type of firearm it is, so they refuse to put it on the roster. Yep. So, for, for, uh, Franklin Franklin Armory sued and won, and that Department of Justice is like, well, you know, let's set let's set it aside. We we, we changed our policy; they're on there now. And the judge is like, no, they're going to proceed to damage claims. So now that Franklin Armory can actually get money back because they lost money by refusing to be able to sell their firearm there so that's a really good story yeah fuck yeah that's awesome and and in california of all places this this whole thing took place franklin armory does good work man uh we don't we don't work with them anymore but like they do good work and i literally have no no qualms about recommending them and thinking that they do good things and good work and all that stuff so there it is yeah excellent stuff so it's good to go out on a high note. Yeah. All right. Now that brings me to a high note. That is this holster. You may notice that this holster matches my windbreaker because it's the exact same pattern because I sent black rhino concealment a message and I said, Hey, I have a Springfield echelon with a surefire X 300 turbo and a Trigicon RMR. And I need a holster that will go on my battle belt with the Safari Lane QLS system and I need all that. And I also want it to be in my custom camouflage that I created. And you know what they said? They said, hold up, fam. We got you. Yeah. They said, we got this. And literally, I got it. Boom. Works perfectly. They were like, this is the first echelon holster that we've done. And yeah, freaking awesome. Also, I'm hearing from our listeners all the time now that Oh, I, I put in a black rhino concealment order and I use coupon code WLS is life. And I got it like two weeks later. Nice. Not saying, not saying it's the, the uh, WLS is life code, yeah. but yeah, and I'm not saying that'll happen to you. I'm just saying, I don't believe in that many coincidences. And you know, I, I'm not allowed to say that you get fast tracked because I don't know if it's true. <laughs> Nor in rad. What holster? Yes, exactly. And check this out. If I put is it that, up again. Is that a John Cena holster? Where, where'd it go, Sean? It matches your camo so perfectly, it's hard to see. Damn. Well, Actually, you're going to have really to start good. doing guns in that paint job. Oh, yeah, that's in the works. Oh, shit, son. <laughs> I actually did just update because, you know, I'm still in research and development phase of this and I took it out. I took pictures of it in a bunch of different places and I made some changes. So like I am now on uh, production V2 of my camo and I think it'll be good. It'll, it'll, be good, be good. But it'll never be as good as black rhino concealment who can make holsters for whatever you need with whatever pattern you want. Like I invented a camouflage and they were able to put it on there. And there's even like a little special treat on there too. Is I don't there? Know, yeah, I don't know why my camera is not autofocusing anymore, but welcome to my world. Right. <laughs> uh, now will it autofocus? I just yes. yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Look how good that looks. That looks real good. Doesn't it? Is that so, version two on there? No, it's version one. Oh, I don't fucking want it. I mean, version one will still exist. Version two is uh, for, it's basically just less green. Okay. Because, you know, high desert here in Colorado. BlackRoundConcealment.com, coupon code WLS is life. And Jeremy is pooping, so we'll just do the reviews without him. Everything is high in, in the desert of Colorado. Yeah. Blood pressure. Weed. 
It was, a, it was a weed joke. Oh, yeah. Javelin Fang said two weeks for him. Look, I'm just pointing out coincidences. Not saying anything. It's time for reviews. Go to wheelishooting.com slash dashboard. Click on reviews and you can leave us your own. Uh, this week, first review comes from Hunter270 and it says five stars. Great podcast. I've been listening for years now and listening on my drive to work. Every week, at least one person stares at me while driving because I'm laughing like a fool listening to the show. <laughs> you should definitely have a not safe to listen to while driving disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how he actually sounds, but in my mind, it, it it's how I imagine him. I'm a man. Oh, my God. In a tuxedo t-shirt. Like I like to park, <laughs> but but it's green because it's like he's ready for like St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Aaron, take the take the next review. Five stars from Eric J. I'm writing this while waiting at Burger King drive through. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Okay, so yes. I did some research on this, and a hot dog is a sandwich. I think so. I think it is because what makes it a sandwich it's 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 something inside of a bun so if you were to take the same bun pull the hot dog out put peanut butter and jelly in it, it would be a sandwich yeah yeah so it's a it's a that's a test but so, the real question is is a calzone a sandwich uh yes even though it's made of dough and not bread i mean bread comes from dough yes but different kinds of dough all right now here's the question for you is a taco a sandwich damn it if I put peanut butter and jelly inside of a taco shell, would it be considered a sandwich? No, yeah. it'd be considered fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> you what? You don't dip uh, Doritos in PB and J? <laughs> no, no, no. Tacos are not sandwiches. That's my. The, I use the peanut butter and jelly test, and that's uh, exactly how it works out for me. Okay. What What about a Crunchwrap Supreme? Oh, I love Crunchwrap Supremes. Yeah, it's tostadas in between tortillas, cooked like a panini. Yeah, no. Now, if you were to say a, a, a no, quesadilla, it's a, totally it's a quesadilla. A yeah. 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 Quesadilla is a sandwich. It's a, it's a grilled cheese with yeah. really weird bread. Exactly. Crunchwrap Supreme is exactly that. Just somebody put Doritos in it. So are you saying that it's like a cornbread? Well, like corn chips, though, right? A, a shell is just basically one Post giant corn shell. chip. It is. Yeah. It's basically, it's a fried tortilla. Yeah. So no. It, th yes. We need the, the uh, someone who fucking eats a lot to answer this question. Oh, look, Jeremy's back. <laughs> well, I mean, also, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, we have a question for you. Is a crunch wrap supreme a sandwich? Uh, yeah, it's technically meat, cheese, and vegetables between two slices of flour. What yeah. about a taco? Is it two uh, slices or one slice? It of, could be two. of what? Taco. Flour. <laughs> well, his was, like, if i if i take a piece of bread and i put meat and cheese on one side and fold it over it's still a sandwich okay what about a taco okay yeah Jeremy? it's just a different kind of sandwich yeah it's a, it's a sandwich that i refer to that. quesadillas as mexican grilled cheese and then, so you then you also believe that a uh 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 what did i say calzone is also a sandwich Say it again. A calzone is yeah. also a sandwich. Yeah. yeah and, I mean, a and, a and, and a pizza is just an open face sandwich. <laughs> uh, so would you get the next one? Okay. This is five stars from Nick Paz Krieger. I can hate you guys. Every time when my kid says, I had to pee, <laughs> my brain now whispers gently in the, my ear that pee is stirred in the bars. I'm really glad it isn't because I would have to piss as often as Nick shit. Please keep doing what you guys are doing or else my wife will find something productive for me to do on my Monday nights, okay? <laughs> wait, oh. wait. Pee isn't kept in the balls? No. P oh, is oh, just one. Yeah, one testicle is, is urine. The other one uh, is, is, you know, is, uh, is a baby just, maker. The one yeah. that stores the pee. Yeah, one ball is piss, one ball is cum. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I try to be. I try to be more PC and say, "Yo, baby barrel maker, one, but barrel two, no. barrel one, barrel Fuck two. It. They're always telling us trust the science, trust this science, <laughs> trust these nuts." <laughs> Savage, you get to pick the winner. Oh, I think I liked the last one honestly because it right. it just screamed Eric Cartman to me. 
All right. So two things. If you want to leave us a review that we will destroy and make fun of you with, uh, go to we like shooting.com slash dashboard and click on reviews. If you are Nick Paz Krieger, email automated at we like shooting.com and we will get you a free firearms radio network patch provided by the Patriot patch company. And if you don't want to wait for that, you can go to patriotpatch.co and use coupon code FRN because if you order anything, you will get a free FRN patch. So just keep that in mind. Nice. And you know what? That's going to do it for this episode of We Like Shooting. So, whoa, it's not time yet, Aaron. <laughs> you said this it's is always late. That, 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 when he's early. You said Joe, it's over. Listen, I think P is stored in your head sometimes. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Bless you. I like how you muted and then unmuted the speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want you to know what I was thinking. Join the gun related advocacy group such as FPC, GOA, SAF. Uh, suicide prevention line number is uh, pound 988 from your cell phone, or if you're a boomer, 1 800 273 8255. We're here live on Mondays every week, but we're on demand every day. Just search We Like Shooting in your favorite podcast app, and I promise you will find us. And if you don't I'll find you, we'll find you. Jeremy will find you. Have you ever seen the end of Jane Silent Bob strike back? No. Fin to be you. Ooh. Always prefer dangerous freedom over <laughs> peaceful slavery. We up out this bitch. You should have played how many people want to kick some ass. Uh, it'll get us taken off YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Norn Rad, all three of my balls are full of piss. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. <Yeah. laughs> Found the guy that lives at Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, it was like an old joke where a British guy went to a baseball game and, and 